Well, hello everyone. How are you doing today? Are you having a good time? Are you having a fun time? Are you having a good and fun time? I maybe had too much of a good time. I, I tried to like swing my hands and my hat came off and it knocked Critter off. And then Critter knocked off the CD that was sitting on my table and the CD came out. Does anyone want to guess what what was the uh it was a I'll give you a hint it was a PlayStation game. Do you know what PlayStation game was sitting on my desk? Chaos 10 minutes in, yeah. MGS1? No, not quite. Tomb Raider 2, Kingdom Hearts. I thought Kingdom Hearts was a PlayStation 2 game. I'll, gi I'll give you a hint. Scott the Waz. Any Scott the Waz fans out there? No, it's an original PlayStation game, not a PlayStation 2 game. <laughs> Someone got it! That's right. I own a copy of Gex. I just, I just have Gex. You know, the best PlayStation game. I don't remember, I think someone sent it to me a while ago. <laughs> and then I tried playing it. I was like, oh, I remember playing this as a kid. This was a fun game. And then I played it again and I was like, this game is awful. <laughs> it's not fun in the slightest. But yes, Gex aside, we're here. If you're watching this on YouTube, today's, um, today's weather, we had Slither by Velvet Revolver, which is one of those weird songs that doesn't say the word Slither in it at all. So like, you'd have no idea, but it's just a kick-ass song and like, you know, Slither, Snake Eyes, it fits. And then we did Popular from Wicked. And, um, no idea why I would do that song. Just, uh, just completely random, you know, has nothing to do with anything. Let me just clear this out, by the way. Songs like that always bug me. It, it can work under certain, like, I understand having a, a song that, like, you know, uh, it doesn't the it doesn't appear the like the the title doesn't appear in the lyrics if it's like thematically relevant. I'm trying to think of an example. Um, like I know there are like Ah, I'm trying to remember all these dream theater so Oh, that's a, that's a... Oh, wait, no, they do say that in the song. I know there's songs where it's like, you know, um, this is a bad example because it does, but, like, it's a, a song about, like, people getting into a car crash, and it uh, changed the way they, like, live their life afterwards, and the song is called A Nightmare to Remember. And it's like, okay, I get it, because, you know, even though the words Nightmare to Remember don't necessarily appear in the song, that's what the song is about, a, a horrible night that you remember. Easy. Although I think in that song they do at one point say, like, it was a nightmare to remember. That song's weird. It's like otherwise good except for one weird part in like the middle. But that weird part lasts like two minutes. It's like a nine minute song or something. Dream Theater's a weird band. I like them though. They're a good song. Anyway, we're here. And I guess I should mention we're starting much later than usual. Usually I try to start around four o'clock my time. And it's currently 6.30. I woke up with like an absolutely like dreadful headache. 
like hard to sit up, feeling kind of dizzy. And I thought maybe I just need to, maybe I slept wrong. If I got up and moved around, it would be fine. I took on a leave. Uh, and then once that didn't work, I was like, maybe I just need to take a shower. Maybe I just need to eat something. Maybe I need to drink more water. Been drinking quite a bit of water. Nothing seemed to, to work. So I ended up just like laying down and going back to bed because I couldn't really like focus on anything. And after like a two hour nap, uh, I'm better. My head still hurts though. So, you know, we're, we're starting late. I may not be able to focus as well as I'd like, and it's possible we'll have to end early. But I didn't want, like, I, I'm feeling well enough to be lucid and talk, so we're, we're not canceling the stream. Are you hungry? No. I ate a very big lunch. I don't know what's up. I don't, I don't, I, I, I get headaches somewhat, like, once a month. And sometimes they're, like, kind of bad, but usually not this bad. This is a new type of bad for me. <laughs> Unfortunately. Sounds like you should go to a doctor, maybe. My, my general thing is, like, you don't go to a doctor until you... It's been at least, like, a day. Or if it's unbearable. And it wasn't unbearable. It's something where, like... Yeah, if I lay down and close my eyes, uh, it's not so bad. It's just that I have things to do, so I can't be laying down and closing my eyes all day. <clears throat> Sounds like a migraine, yeah. Probably something like that. I have headaches a lot when I wake up. I thought it was normal. I, again, I sometimes wake up with them, but usually I don't wake up like... Like, this was a headache so bad that the headache woke me up. <laughs> I woke up because of the headache. But we're here now. And I've been practicing this, and I think I understand it well enough at least to explain it. Did you hit your head at all? No. Could be dehydration, yeah, that's why I've been, you know, I guess I've been up for two, three, four, five, six, for about four hours, and I've drank in most of this. Guess I gotta finish it all off. Can I get some chugs in the chat? Something to, to spur me onwards. I'll be so hydrated they won't believe. I'm the king of hydration. I need to have extra water. That way the snake eyes won't be able to burn me. First we hydrate, then we educate. Don't hydrate, yeah, but there we go. Water completed. I really should, I, this was a pretty good bottle, but I know it's not the highest quality because the, there was a thing telling you like how many ounces you had and how, how, what, like, oh, by this time in the day, you should be here. And it completely rubbed off. I didn't even wash this or anything, it's just from my hands. So I have no idea how many ounces this is or anything. Yeah, now I'll be pissing all over the ladder. Hope this is gonna be a speedy climb, we'll see. Uh, oh, and Mr. Fam Squad, thank you for the prime hype. 
My prime is yours once again. Yeah, I missed that seven minutes ago. Okay, give me a second. I'm gonna go fill this up and get a new water bottle. Um, I have I have many others, uh, and then we'll we'll get we'll get rolling with this. All right, I'm back. Hopefully, Critter kept things entertaining back here from his little box. Yeah, we got the the little water cup. Good times and sunny days. Makes me smile a little bit. And yeah, that's, it's... I have no idea how this climb, I haven't been on the ladder all month, or last month. I don't know if Snake Eyes has played a lot, if people surrender to it, if these are long knockout drag out duels. Do you feel like the Master Duel ban list just makes you take extra steps to get to what the TCG is doing? Or does it actually make a different deck? Um, you're talking about Snake Eyes specifically? Oh, with Snake Eyes I mean, yeah. Uh, I do feel like, granted, this take this with a grain of salt because even though I watch some TCG like content creators and stuff, I haven't actually played in the TCG, so I don't know exactly what Snake Eye is like, but from what I understand, um, the, the interesting thing about Snake Eye, right, is that nothing the deck does on its own is really all that powerful. They don't have a great boss monster, they don't have any, like, in-archetype negates or disruption, it's just an advantage engine. It just puts bodies on the field while searching you stuff, which allows you to make all sorts of extra deck stuff. And the amount of extra deck things you can make is actually like, there's a whole lot of diversity. Uh, that's actually one of the interesting things about this is that like, if you look at everyone's build, the main deck is very, very similar, but I've seen all sorts of crazy shit in the extra deck. And that's even like mine, I'm playing stuff like Draco Berserker and uh, Ravenous Crocodragon, which I haven't seen like anyone else playing. And I'll probably change that up. There's, there's a whole lot of like, really the only things you need to play in this deck to make it work is like Promethean Princess, Amblo Whale, IP Mascarena. Oh, and uh, Link Karibo. So you've got four slots that are like must plays and the other 11 could be almost anything. <laughs> and that's the thing is the big difference between Snake Eye in Master Duel versus Snake Eye in the TCG is that the TCG has SP Little Knight and Typhon, which is like Zeus 2, Zeus but generic. But those two being so strong really centralizes the deck a lot more and also makes it a lot more oppressive. In Master Duel, it's actually a little weaker and a little more unique because we don't have those two amazing extra deck cards. We also don't have Bonfire, but like we have Where Arf Thou, which is almost Bonfire. It's, I don't know. So Bonfire, obviously, you, there's no, there's nothing you have to do to activate it. But I really, really like this card. Because it serves almost the same purpose. Like, if your Ash gets Ashed, um, you can just add Poplar as if nothing happened. And then continue your combo anyway. But if it doesn't get Ashed, um, you could just grab, like, a Kurikara. You could grab Jet Synchron. You could grab Effect Failure. You could grab Birch. Um, and that's one of the other things is that the main engine is pretty pretty set, but what um, side cards you play, very much up to uh, the individual. Because you're playing, because especially like I'm playing stuff like Where Art Thou, I could easily put in something like um, uh, Magician Souls that would be able to get more advantage off of the spell traps that we put there while putting another level one on board. You could play DD Crow to try to get more graveyard removal if you know you're up against the mirror match. Uh, there's a lot of like level one stuff. Just being able to search any level one 
uh, really kind of opens up the ability to play a whole bunch of like one-off tech cards that we might experiment with later. Yeah, Droll. Droll, I completely forgot about that. Souls can send back row monsters too, yeah. It can send back row, it can send the, um, the field spell if you don't want it, and then you can just, like, recycle it with sinful spoils. If you're not playing Subversion, and you're just playing, like, two of these, and is this a snake eye? This is a snake eye. Yeah, if you're just playing like this, and, um, yeah, if you're just playing these two, and, like, you've already used both of them, but you get your search with Diabell Star, then you can get one, and instead of setting it up for next turn, you can essentially use it with, um, to plus. I'm glad you're playing Subversion, yeah. And there's other Snake Eye spell traps that you could play. I keep wanting to mess with it, but I'm like, I need to focus on learning the version I've got. We can mess with it later. So yeah, this is my, my version. Pretty standard, just like we're playing Elf, even though I don't really know the combos with Elf. We might remove that. Um, we're playing Nightmare Phoenix because it's a level 2 fire gets more back row removal because especially down in platinum I think we'll have more random stuff and I'm just playing more synchros I really like doing synchro stuff with this and I find oftentimes I'll have access to like a jet synchron while I have like a Diabell star or a uh, flamberge so I wanted like another level eight and a level nine I could make or even if you have like Diabell star and a level one and a jet synchron then you can make Ravenous and draw two. Make Elf with Princess and Synchron, yeah. Can this deck make Trishula? It can, but not often. And usually if you are making it, it's on the first turn, which is not the most useful time to make it. Yeah, I know. Sunlight Wolf lets you add back stuff. Um, there's there's really, a, again, the extra deck. You could do so much stuff with this. You can play like a Salamangrate package even, where you do like Sunlight Wolf into the um, like Heat Soul so you can draw extra cards, especially if you're on more like hand traps. If you take out like the Subversion and the uh, Cross Out and just play like two more hand traps, that can be really good. Yeah, Elf Revives Formula Synchron. There's, mine's a, it's a hodgepodge. I keep trying to think of things. The only real unique thing is I really like Draco Berserker of the Tenyi because sometimes you want to make a level eight and you don't have a link in the graveyard that you want to use for this. And I feel like this is pretty good in this format just because it's like, when your opponent activates a monster effect, banish it. So it's like, if they activate Ash, not only do you... I think it negates the effect, right? Let me look at this. Um, you can send two cards to the graveyard, including this card. And then this is... When your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, banish it. Yeah. I'm not sure if that prevents the effect from activating... It doesn't negate, it sends for cost. I'm not sure if it has to be in the graveyard. Banish Poplar, yeah, probably Banish Poplar. Either way, there's like a lot of effects here where if you, you know, if you banish it when they activate it, that's more effective than just straight up negating it. I don't think it banishes. Well, no, they activate a monster effect and it's in the graveyard and it's just, you can banish it. So they would activate, it would go to the graveyard and then you would trigger this in response. The green can reborn. Yeah, but like, here's the, okay, normal, if they normal summon Snash, 
they add poplar, poplar comes out, it searches, and then you banish the poplar. Like, now they're left with ash on board, snash on board. And then if they don't have birch or... I guess they could use... Yeah, they could use sinful spoils because they searched it off of poplar and they could send the snash off to get oak. And then Oak brings back the Poplar, but it already used its effect. I don't know, I feel like it still puts them behind. Yeah, you could also banish Flamberge if you can get to that point. We'll see. It's just a theory. Again, I've only been like playing against the, the AI, so I don't know exactly how well this will do. I feel like I've got a handle on the deck, but, um... And I might explain this in the episode, so I'm not sure if I want to go too far in. But I, I made a post on Twitter. Goo. Gotta get that goo, dude. You have a third Valor? Yeah, but I want to go 41 cards, and I don't know what to get rid of. Um... What was it? Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, I, I made a post on Twitter talking about, like... I've run into a unique problem with Snake Eye, which is that it's too good. <laughs> when I, when I, and by that I mean when I try to learn a deck, right, usually what happens, like I'm thinking about uh, when I was learning Libromancer, because that's a pretty complicated deck. But the thing is, if you mess up your Libromancer combo, your turn ends. So, like, I would be testing that, and I'd be, like, in the AI, I'd be like, okay, do this, do this, do this, and then, like, I'd reach a point, and I'd go, oh, no, I activated the wrong effect, now I have to end my turn on nothing. I don't get to Ritual Summon, I don't get to Synchro, or if I do, I, like, I just have a Barone, and I know that's not the proper thing. So, and that sticks in my mind, you know, I don't remember the good times as much, but those failures, you know, they embed their way into your brain. And so next time I'm playing, I'm like, okay, this, this, don't do that, because last time you did that, you ended on nothing. That's kind of what helps me learn, is to do the combos over and over again, and every time I mess up, it's like, okay, I learned to do it better. The problem with Snake Eye is like, I'll do a bunch of stuff, and then realize I messed up, but because the deck has so much gas, I could just keep going anyway. And because there's so many like redundant cards, like, oh, if you didn't search this with this, there's another card that searches it, so you're fine. If you didn't put it in the graveyard now, you'll be able to put it in the graveyard later with something else. So I'll just be able to end up like stumbling my way into making the same end board I would have made anyway. <laughs> And so as a result, it, you know, I go back next time and I'm like, okay, I do this, this. What do I search in this thing? Is it the field spell or is it the original sinful spoils? I don't remember because in the past I've done both and either way I won. <laughs> like either way I ended up making the end board. I know one is better, one is more optimal, but I can't remember because instead of having that memory of like my turn ended and I'm screwed, it just key I just kept going and I played out a whole duel and so I don't remember this one interaction. <laughs> Flamberge definitely going to one in a month. Maybe I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised if they banned Link Karibo. Link Karibo, or probably because they made it a super rare Snash. Or who knows, if it's, uh, if, you know, Master Duel being Master Duel, they'll probably be like, Birch to one. <laughs> or what would be, what would be the, like, least impactful thing that would actually have some impact on this. Yeah, it would have to be... 
Because Birch, everyone's playing Birch at one. It's one of those things, I'm trying to think, like, what's the equivalent of Math Mech where they hit, um... Circular to one? Where it was like, most people were playing three circular, but you didn't have to. You could easily play one. You realistically only use one. It's just an extender. But here, anything that you realistically can use, they're, they're doing it. Diameter. I always get diameter and circular mixed up. They're both circle-like. Like, everything's SR or UR that you're playing at more than one. So it'd be like, you know, I imagine next time they'll be like, Semi-Limit Snash. <laughs> Put this to two. Or yeah, Original Sinful to one. It's like, everyone's playing it at two. But you could play it at one. Don't make a big deal. Finally ban Elf? I doubt it. Ban Heat of the Fire Charmer. <laughs> that would be... <laughs> heat of God! Yeah, realistically, if you want to, like, seriously hurt this deck without hitting any of the Snake Eye stuff, hitting Link Karibo would be pretty big. There's not really an easy replacement for that. That messes up so many of your combos. Oh wait, yes there is. You can just play Relinquished Anima. It's not as good, but it does the same thing. Yeah, never mind. Um, but it'd probably be this, although this is still pretty new. But if you ban this, it gets rid of a lot of their gas and their ending points. I run both. But yeah, I think that's realistically they're setting up Snash to be hit. They're fine with giving people super rare points. Anima does the same thing, but you don't have to click no a million times during the combo. You know you can right click instead of uh, clicking the button no. Ban formula, yeah. But that's, that's my prediction now. You can lock it in. Snake Eye Ash to two. They'll semi-limit it. They might do something later on, but I think they'll, they'll semi-limit it. And then, yeah, maybe Ban Oak. They're never going to hit Diabelle Star. Well, no, she's part of, like, two men. That'd be like hitting Visa Starfrost. Sinful Spoils to one. I feel like if they if they have an option not to hit a UR, they won't. Banning Oak kills the deck? I don't think so. It, it might kill the pure version of it, but once I was looking at some um some Fire King variants from the TCG, they don't even play Oak. <laughs> okay, so let's get us started here. Oh, and we need to get this open, don't we? We are on stream number one. Ha! Huh. One more drink of liquid courage. Which is water, chat. It's just water. It's all you gotta do is believe in yourself. It's just plain old water. Yup, water. How did the pack opening go? Pretty good. Yeah. Um, again, we don't have the, we don't keep the gems up there like we used to, but it took uh, 11,000 gems to get the deck. So a lot, but if you had been saving up your gems, you know, 11,000's not that hard. Although I guess it is more than the maximum amount of free gems you're allowed to have.
And that's also keep in mind that like, you know, I already had one of um, like, I already had an elf. I already had an IP. I already had a link Karibo, Barone de Floor, Access, Appalooza, Boral Load, Draco. None of those had to be built. I got Royal One for One. Oh. 150 bucks a month, yeah. Which, but I've said this in previous ones, but I guess it doesn't hurt again for people who are curious since we're talking about money. Because um, I did my taxes recently. And... Where is it at? How much did I spend on Master Duel in 2023? Last year, total Master Duel spending was... $906. Which is like, you know, a lot. But for a full year, that's like less than $100 a month. Considering I play this like several times a week. As a hobby, I think you're nearing the edge of like, you might be spending too much money on a hobby. But as a business expense, $900's not that bad. Especially since a lot of, you know, you, you all donated and stuff. A hundred bucks a month for a hobby isn't bad. I guess it depends, like, where you are. I was used to, um, when I used to work fast food, my yearly budget for games was $150. So if, I, if there was a $60 game, I could get two games per year. So I always had to budget out, like, I was one of those people who would always look at, like, what's the, what's the game length? How many hours can I get out of this? Because if it, if it didn't last me six months, it wasn't worth getting. <laughs> Two games and a DLC? I never bought a DLC. Knowing what I spend on my whiskey hobby. <laughs> I, you know, I don't think I've ever heard anyone frame it that way. I'm not a drunk. Whiskey is my hobby. <laughs> I got you, fam. What other games do you play? I've been playing the shit out of Baldur's Gate 3 recently. Aren't packs basically DLC? Yeah. Yeah, I know whiskey can't, like, you can collect, like, rare whiskeys. You can go on, like, a whiskey tasting thing. You could treat it almost like wine and go to different breweries and get micro brews and stuff. I just, I just love that idea of someone, like, trying to, someone who is just, like, going out and buying Jack Daniels all the time. They're like, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't drink too much. I collect Jack Daniels bottles. This is, I'm a, I'm a whiskey collector, all right? Don't judge me. If you need me, I'll be crying in the closet. <laughs> I don't have an alcohol problem. You have a problem. Have you tried Final Fantasy VII? No, that never really interested me. The, the aesthetics of like JRPGs almost always turn me off. There, there's just something about, like, I know it's cool if someone has a giant sword that's, like, bigger than their body, but unless there's, like, an effort to explain it in-universe, it, it just, it always seems just, like, ridiculous to me. Like, it, it, it would be one thing if they had made a big deal about, like, oh, you know, he trained for years to learn this and, like, this was unique, but, like, you know, Sephiroth has a sword that's three times as long as his body. That's just, they just use impractical weapons. And they, like, flip them around in a way that, like, even if you were to use that weapon, you would never use it that way. It's the same thing. I have, I have so many friends who, like, I remember when Ruby came out. And they were like, this is so cool. Watch this. This is so neat. And the whole time I'm like, why would you fight with a scythe? <laughs> That's, that's so impractical. That's a, why would you put, I'm like, where's the ammo go in the gun? Why are you, 
Or like she'd do a thing where like do like five backflips and then shoot someone. I was like, why did you do all those backflips? Those didn't help you shoot it any better. There's, I don't know, like you can, I can be cool, but the cool only extends so far. And that's, I don't, that's probably just a me thing. I just don't like the aesthetic. If you've got a bunch of belts hanging off of you that don't seem to do anything. Or if, uh, in the comic industry, what's his name? Rob Liefeld. He used to always draw, he'd draw all these, like, badass guys with guns. And then they'd have, like, a bandolier of pouches. Just, like, a dozen pouches. And it's like, what's in those? You got all these little bags and everything. <laughs> are they, are there snacks? Why do you have- that feels like it'd be so bulky. <laughs> Rob Liefeld can't draw feet? No, he can't. Dark Us Dude Media. Thank you for the prime hype. Enjoy Amazon money. I appreciate it. It was a thing, yeah. Explaining cool makes it uncool. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know, the, I'm trying to think, I because obviously there's some stuff that I do think is cool that's, like, not realistic, but I have a much higher threshold for, like, suspending my disbelief. It's weird because, like, I really like Scott Pilgrim, at least the movie and what I've read of the comics, and that's a bunch of, like, skinny people with no, like, fighting training, jumping around and doing super cool kung fu shit. But I give it a pass because that whole world is just, like, goofy. It's like a comedy, right? Like, it's weird to me that, like, Final Fantasy VII takes itself so seriously. <laughs> it's like he's in, a, he's in an army. What about Gurren Lagann? Gurren Lagann had a lightheartedness to it, too. I guess it also... Gurren Lagann had, like, themes. And so the theme was, like, doing the impossible. Being so strong that it didn't matter. You know, yeah, they have a drill that's, like, the size of a planet that they can lift up with one hand. Um, but that, like... Again, they explain it in the story. They're like, this is impossible. This is impractical. But the whole idea, the whole theme of the story is that by working together and believing in yourself, you can do impossible things. It's not just something that, like, the character just happens to have. Final Fantasy's tone is all over the place, yeah. A anyway, let's... We've been here almost an hour now. Y'all shouldn't ask me about... <laughs> right? Don't, don't get me started on video game stuff. My threshold expectation. Yeah, or like, um... Okay, one... I guess it was a small example. Bleach. Bleach had huge and practical swords. But I gave it a pass because they explained that the swords are like... Like they're spirits, they're ghosts. And their shape has to do with, like, it's a reflection of the spirit itself. And once you make the point of, like, these are magical, unique, spiritual swords, I no longer worry about how practical it is to wield them. Because they're supposed, like, you know, they're supposed to be weird and goofy and magic. Not goofy, necessarily. It, I guess it just bothers me when, like, you have a show or a game or a piece of fiction or whatever, and it's like... Yeah, we have these people, and uh, at least in Final Fantasy's thing, like, they're eco-terrorists trying to take down this big government facility that's destroying the environment, and they're, they used to be part of a paramilitary group, and it's like, okay, I get all that, and then you see them, and it's like, why does he have that big sword? It's like, he just does. Why does Garrett, uh, Barrett have a machine gun hand? He just does. It, it's weird that, like, they have this... They, they go out of their way to explain so much in the story, but then the absurd visuals are just kind of like, it's just there, just don't think about it. <laughs> Big Sword is cool. Barret is cool. Yeah. I 
I guess I just never like got into the mindset. Anyway, the Buster Sword has a backstory. I'll listen to it later. It's now an anime ladder climb, yeah. Why does Yugi have ridiculous hair? Exactly! I never liked the Yu-Gi-Oh anime! <laughs> I was never an anime guy! Well, I was I was an anime guy, but I wasn't a Yu-Gi-Oh anime guy. He's a goth nerd! His hair is shaped like a star. It wouldn't be as bad if, like, other people had weird hair, but he's, like, the only one. He's got three colored hair and it's shaped like a star. Does he dye it? Or does he naturally have like blonde, blonde locks, blonde streaks in his black and red hair? <laughs> in Vrains, they all have anime hair. In Vrains, they were in a video game where you could make an avatar. So it made sense that they all had over the top big anime hair. Outside of the game, they mostly looked pretty normal. Atem had that hair in ancient Egypt. Yusaku's hair. Yeah, but he's the old his even his isn't that bad. It's blue. You gotta have the blue hair. His hair is supposed to be in the shape of a hand doing the paper sign? This? Or like that? Usually when I think paper, you're doing the... That, that almost looks like a salute. <laughs> Allegedly! Anyway, okay. <laughs> Let's get this recorded. And here we are, once, not once more, already on to, I was like, every time I turn around, I'm like, we can get it in one take, I believe. Keep, keep track of the takes, everyone. And here we are, stream number one, a weekend has passed, I've done quite a bit of testing, and... Though I know the deck pretty well, it's uh, it's it's still a little little elusive. This deck is a little hard to learn. Um, you forgot the snake. Oh yeah, yeah. I gotta get no leg, Mister No Legs. Uh, know me some legs. Do dum bum bum. There we go, that looks pretty good. Hell yeah, okay. All right, here we are, stream number one, ready to jump in. I've practiced, we're on platinum five, and we're, we're ready to jump in. I think I've made a couple, couple changes to the deck as I showed it before, but it, it's mostly the same. I've actually had a little bit of trouble sort of learning the deck and narrowing it down because it's too good. It's it's very rare to say something like this, but normally when I learn a deck, right, I'll test it, I'll do some practices, and then I'll mess up and I'll be like, oh, I messed up there. My turn didn't end the way I wanted it to. I'll immediately surrender. I'll go back, try it again. And you remember that mess up because it just happened. But with Snake Eye, there's so much gas, and there's so much redundancy, that even if you mess up two, three times, you could just keep going. You could just keep building stuff, and uh, there's so much recovery power too, that oftentimes you could just come back and win the game anyway. So this is not going to be the best Snake Eye gameplay, but I know the deck enough that I can at least explain it to you. So if you have no idea how this deck works, if you want a primer, I'll go over the basics of everything, sort of explain my build. And if you don't care about any of this, if you just want to jump into the duels, 
Uh, there's time codes below. I, I use the chapter code, you can check the description, they should be actually on the YouTube timeline. I spend a lot of time on those. You got every individual duel marked out, so if you want to find a place that looks interesting, jump ahead there. Otherwise, let's do a little deck profile, shall we? Okay, I think that should work. Uh, dawn of the first day. Only three takes, not bad. I feel like it gets the, I, I, I'm trying to remember. I thought I said something at the end of the last stream and I don't remember how I went out. I guess I could go watch it. Fuck. Okay, let's let's double check something real quick, chat. How come no Zelantis or Selene? Because I don't know the combos that go with them. Okay, what was the time code that I did? 147? Uh trims only this. don't feel like if you don't have anything in mind editor you can always just like just like i'm trying to think of the word for that whittle down i guess would be the word chip away yeah so i'm gonna be spending the rest of the day just testing this with people on twitch trying to whittle the deck down chip away at the imperfections and hopefully when i come back I'll have a slightly better version of the deck that we can start the climb with on the next stream. I'll have like a new shirt and everything. It'll be neat. Let's see if we get a get a nice like transition. Editor, are you prepared? Are you prepared? This is your chance to be creative. Let's go ahead. Big fancy transition. Wah! Okay. I, th I think I explained like, you know, new deck and everything. Okay, I think I got it. Chipping away. Yeah. Okay, so now we just do the deck profile. Unfortunately, this part I practiced a little bit. You know, I was like laying around. This is not a new shirt. It's a different shirt from last time, but I've had this before. I haven't worn it in a while because it's short sleeves. It's been winter. It's been too cold. Dark charm. Yeah, we'll probably change some stuff up. All right, so if you know nothing about Snake Eyes, it can seem a little bit complicated, and it kind of is, but there's actually a few really simple things you need to understand about it. One, its gimmick is moving cards, not cards, okay. All right, so if you know nothing about Snake Eyes, it can seem a little complicated at first. Uh, the cards don't really feel like they have a clear, they do have a clear, okay. All right, so if you know nothing about Snake Eyes, they could seem a little complicated at first, but they're actually pretty simple to understand once you break everything down. Their main gimmick is taking monsters and putting them into the back row. And unlike something like Crystal Beast, which also puts monsters in the back row, they don't really do anything there. It's just kind of a place to store monsters that isn't the graveyard or the banishment. They've got a couple effects that can do that to your opponent's monsters, either on the field or in the graveyard, which is just a way to like get them out of play. You know, if they turn into spell traps, they no longer have their monster effects. They're no longer in the graveyard. Uh, when you put your own monsters there, they kind of serve as ammunition. You've got a couple effects that say like, send a monster or a card on the field. You got a cup. As for your monsters, they kind of serve almost as ammunition. You've got a couple effects that say, take a card on the field and send it to the graveyard in order to do a thing, usually summon a monster of some kind. So being able to put your, your monsters into the back row basically just makes them free sends. You don't have to send monsters off and lose card advantage. You just send those useless back row things away. Banish old term. Yeah, let me, let me try that again. We love the banishment. As for putting your cards in the back row, that's mostly... 
As for putting your cards in the back row, it's... You could think that... Pff, ugh. As for your cards, you put them in the back row almost as a form of, like, ammunition, is how I look at it. You've got a lot of effects that say, take a face-up card on the field, send it to the graveyard, and then do a thing. And yeah, you could send your, your nice monster that's on the field, but then you lose card advantage. If you have a free effect that puts something in the back row, then you can send that off and it essentially doesn't cost you anything. It feels free, especially when you have cards like Popular that says when it leaves the field, you can put it in the back row. Or technically, you could put any, I think, fire monster in the back row. Things do get a little bit complicated because this works with any fire monster. You have some effects that search any level one fire monster, um, stuff that works with snake eyes specifically, and some things that search sinful spoils cards. And you've got like this card, which is just wanted, seeker of sinful spoils. And then you've got this, which is original sinful spoils snake eye. So it's a sinful spoils card and a snake eye card. And that's really the only complicated part of this deck because everything else is just a resource engine. You know, this card says when you summon it, search a snake eye monster. Um, this says when it's searched, summon it. When it's summoned, search a snake eye spell trap. Um, this card, when it's summoned, take a level one fire, get it out of the graveyard. So if you have these and you haven't used these, they're all hard once per turn, you can get them out and then trigger their effects. If you control a fire monster, special summon this from your hand for free. Send any card on the field, summon this, search a sinful spoils card. Uh, and really that's, that's the crux of the deck is just summoning these things out and every card you summon gets you another card, so you never run out of resources. And this is especially helped by their boss monster, Snake Eyes Flamberge Dragon. This thing has three effects, and they all kind of tie everything together. One, during your turn, you can take a card in either player's field or graveyard, put it in the back row. So it's removal if you're going second, if your opponent has stuff you need to get rid of, just plop, set it in the back row. Uh, you can also set your own cards in the back row, which is not only useful for the way I explained earlier, but for its second effect, which is during your opponent's turn, as a quick effect, you can summon a card from your back row. Usually what we're going to be doing is like link climbing with all these, and during that link climbing, we'll make an IP Masquerina. And then this thing will be able to set IP into the back row, summon it during your opponent's turn, and if somehow you're unfamiliar with this, uh, this thing... This thing can link, I almost said synchro summon. This thing can, this thing can link summon during your opponent's turn with cards you have. So, you know, just make night. Try. And if you're somehow unfamiliar with IP, this thing can just link summon during your opponent's turn with cards that you control. So, you know, make a Nightmare Unicorn, when it's summoned, spin a card back to the deck. Or oftentimes you're just making an Appalooza with two or three materials. Just gives you two negates during your opponent's turn. And you can do the same thing with something like Formula Synchron. Some, some versions of the combo uh, make this, put it in the back row, summon it during your opponent's turn, and this can Synchro summon during the opponent's turn. You got a level two tuner, level eight, that allows you to make Bar Baron de Floor during your opponent's turn, just give you another negate. Now the third effect of this thing is if it is sent to the graveyard, target two level one fire monsters in the graveyard and special summon them. Doesn't negate their effects, which is really the... Which is probably the most power which is probably the most powerful effect in the entire deck and the thing that really makes this resource engine like unstoppable. Because even though these are all once per turns, you know, if you send this during your opponent's turn by say linking off with it or synchro summoning, or even if they just destroy it or whatever, you're getting back Ash and you're getting back Oak. Ash will search you another monster, Oak will summon another monster out of the graveyard, probably Poplar, and then Poplar will search you another spell trap. 
So you're going plus five. You're getting three monsters onto the field and searching two cards for next turn. So if they can't kill you through those three defensive walls, then next turn you're going to have everything you need to go off again and just build a whole bunch of more stuff. What does Soul Absorb do? Uh, Soul Absorb isn't in this deck, I don't think. So that's the archetype in a nutshell. We've got some spell traps. You'll see how those work. But basically, you're just... It... So that's Snake Eye in a nutshell. We have some spell traps. There are a whole bunch of other little... Um... Oh, okay. So that's Snake Eye in a nutshell. There, there's a whole bunch of other little effects and interactions. I'm not even going to go over the, the spell traps. You'll see how they work. But basically, they just summon cards from the deck. You've got a lot of effects that summon cards or search cards. And you're basically just making extra deck stuff, which is where the deck really shines. Like, almost every Snake Eye deck I've seen plays a very, very similar uh, main package, right? Like, you're going to play three of this Ash, you're going to play two Poplar, because you don't want to start with it, you, you search it. One of each of these, three of the... the, the okay, I'm getting, off the, I'm getting out in the weeds again. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> So that's Snake Eye in a nutshell. You know, there, there's other little... <laughs> so that's Snake Eye in a nutshell. There's a whole bunch of other little quirks, a bunch of effects I didn't mention. I'm not even going to talk about the spell traps, but pretty much all of them just revolve around one of those things, either putting stuff in the back row, searching stuff, summoning things from the deck. You're just putting a bunch of monsters on board and then making extra deck cards. And that's really where the uniqueness of this, this deck shines. Because even though the core is the same for almost every Snake Eye variant I've seen, like everyone's gonna play three of this and two of uh, this, one of each of these, uh, the extra decks can vary quite a bit. Uh, you have access to a whole bunch of links, synchros. There are some people using like Proxy F Magician to make fusions even. So there, there's a wide variety of things you can do with this. And because the main deck package is actually fairly small, you have about 15 or 16 cards that are what I would call flex slots. In this case, I filled it mostly with just like hand traps, more search power, um, cross out designator, because I feel like there's gonna be a lot of people on this deck. This is really good in mirror matches, called by the grave. We're playing uh, one of the, the snake eye cards that we can search. Some people like this, some people don't. But if you don't wanna play all that, you can easily swap it out for almost like an entirely different deck engine. You know, that's why in the TCG, people are playing this with Fire King. You can just slot a whole Fire King core into this. Uh, you can also slot TGs into this. You could slot Salamangrates into this. Pretty much any deck that has a level one fire monster is going to have synergy with the Snake Eyes. And as such, you can put in a whole bunch of really weird tech cards. That's why you'll see a lot of people playing one Kurikara because you have ways to search this in the archetype. It's a level one fire. So is Jet Synchron, which is what allows us to do the synchro version of the deck. And there are versions that don't play this. We might end up tossing this later and focusing more on just making pure links. We might add other stuff in. This deck is probably going to change a lot, at least in terms of, again, these flex spots and the extra deck. But the main core is going to remain the same. So let's see how far that core can take us, jumping into Platinum 5, showing off how it works, and hopefully, I don't know, some kind of snake pun. Snake eyes. I, I, I've been talking too long. Let's just duel. I just want to duel. <laughs> can I just duel? Oh God. Deck profile. Uh. Snake Eye works, um, as always, try and cut this as tight as you can, cut out all the stammering and ums, if possible. Thank you. I know that was when I was, when I used to edit my own stuff a lot, 
that was always the thing that like I hated doing the most. I started scripting out my deck profiles because I would rather do that than have to go through everything. Is there a level one salad? I mean, probably. There's like gotta be, right? Oops. Oh, whatever. Yeah, there's Mole. There's Raccoon. There's two of them. I'm not sure if these are any good. I feel like you don't play these, but they exist. Standard! Season 27 has begun. We're not playing the burger deck. Let's go ahead. There we go. Snake eyes. You'll never be good enough. Well, not with that attitude. All right. And you want to go first with this deck if you can. Um, I think, that, I mean, we're playing a couple cards that help us going second, but it really is just like, you want to go first and set up your board. Fortunately, the boards aren't so oppressive that you can't play through them, so you're usually pretty good. What does our opponent have? Looks like they got something. Uh, we're just going to lead with the Snake Eye Ash, or Snash as they call it. Because you can't call this Ash, because there's already a very popular Ash in the game. And add Poplar. Popular. You're going to be popular. This has a finisher rank. So when this is searched, you summon it. When this is summoned, you add a thing. And we're going to go for this thing. And then immediately what you're going to do is make Link Karibo with the Poplar. Poplar goes to the graveyard. You can target a fire monster in the graveyard and put it onto the field in the spell trap zone. And it just targets itself because it's the only thing we have. Uh, we don't actually want this Link Karibo on the field. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to think. No, we should still be good at this point. So we're gonna use this. You can tribute itself and a card on the field. Send it to the graveyard, summon a card. We're gonna summon Oak. Oak strong. Oak summons a card out of the graveyard. Bring back the ash. Special summon? Yeah, I think you can add it to your hand too, but why would you? Um, let's see here. At this point, we can do a couple things. I don't think we have the, we might have the way of, there's a way to play around like Nibiru and that's where I really struggle is like, I don't know the combo lines that are optimal, but I know we can get to other stuff from here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Oak. This can send a card off and itself, summon a card from the deck. This is if you have Ash, this is where you wanna use it. And this is where we get Flamberge. He's flambin'. Okay, and then... Ooh, I just realized... No, I think we're still good. We're gonna use these two to make IP. Hello there. And then Flamberge is going to summon back two monsters. Doesn't matter what, they're just Link material. Bada bingo, bada bango. And then we use these to go into Promethean Princess. Use this as two materials, yes. More summon animations. Princess can just summon a fire monster out of the graveyard once per turn, and you want to bring back your Flamberge. It's free real estate. And now that IP is in the graveyard, that's when you want to use this effect. You can put her in the field spell zone. 
Ha cha 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 cha. Then you can make the Amblo whale, right? Yeah. I never used Where Art Thou. I completely forgot. Um. I just want to save it for next turn. This seems pretty weak, but this is actually one, two, three, like four disruptions. I could get rid of one to put two more and then I'd be able to make four? Yeah, I think that's better. So we're gonna activate one for one. We'll send this off. We're gonna summon Jet Synchron. Then we're gonna use the Where Arf Thou. We're gonna get this. And we're going to special summon it. All right. And I think that's good. We still have this. Again, it's one of these decks like, I know I messed up somewhere. I could do better. I don't think it matters. Because we're just going to, um... Oh yeah, we'll wait. We gotta wait till the main phase. Probably wanna wait for them to summon something. That way they, um... Soul absorption. This is not a standard deck. I was like, and this is where we make Appalooza, but I don't think Appalooza is going to be helpful here. Oh, God. Uh, do we have any way of dealing with back row? I mean, I guess we got Nightmare Phoenix, but that only gets rid of one of them. And of course they have the one of well, they just got 10,000 life points. <laughs> More than 10,000. I'll never lose if I have a billion life points. The sleepy girl. Okay, so I know we want to get rid of that, right? Yeah, this seems like a good thing to do. Okay, so we're just going to use this. Um, and yeah, we'll do this, that way we can draw a card. I like to draw cards, chat. Also, everything can't be destroyed by battle now. Or I guess linked to monsters? Yeah, let's just pop that. Draw a card? Yes. Ah, hello, Diabelle Star. Also, thank you for the, the prime. Add one Nemluria, okay. They just, they just got another one. They're going to try to banish everything. Um, place one from your thing. I forget what the... No cards in your extra deck. Okay, they have to have nothing except for her. So they have to empty their extra deck. They can empty a lot of it. But I don't think they can empty all of it. They've got 15 cards in there. 13 left. They get all the life points though. Twenty-eight. 
20,000. Vanish three, okay. Uh, let me read this again. I played this before, but I forget. The targets on them, Luria. I don't think the graveyard one targets. Vanish one, this card gains 500 for each card. Yeah, I need to destroy that, I think. Or is it this one? Um, yeah, I don't want him to beat over my dudes. So let's negate that, and it stops him from gaining more life points, too. Oh, I just read this. Also, why didn't Promethean Princess activate? Shouldn't I have been able to do that? Well, fuck! I'll gain so many life points, they'll never win! You have to discard a card to summon Promethean? No, I don't. Um. Yeah. Okay, good. They attacked with their biggest guy first. Can't be destroyed by battle! I don't know why they didn't just go for the other hundred, you know, you're getting you're getting your way downtown. Okay, Temple of the Snake Eye is a pretty good one. Um Okay, so what does this say again? When your opponent activates the targets a Nemluria, and this absolutely targets. So I need to do something that doesn't target. Or something they can't react to. Special summon one, but return it to the hand. All right. They have the one that bounces. That's no good. Uh, place a card. Yes, I think we just put the other Flamberge. Gain more life points! Okay, finally. Um. Yeah, let's pop this. And... This card is special summon, add one, change one to face down defense position. Uh, let's get rid of the big one. Oh wait, this does target. Shit. Well. And now they can negate it. Oh, but they did. It loses a hundred attack for every monster you control. Just making the Amblo whale.
Okay, I still get to summon it. All the life points! All right, time for Advantage City. Uh, we want this and Oak. And yeah, the only problem is going to be the time. Uh, yeah, let's grab this one. Okay. Uh, put it in the owner's spell trap. Okay, so this will bait out this thing. Because this is just once per turn. And then they get another one. Whatever. God, I hate this card. It's it's not good. Do not play Soul Absorption. It doesn't help you. It just feels like it does. Okay, so we need to get rid of Promethean Princess. Poplar goes into the back row. Special summon this. Send the Poplar. Activate. Set. This one, I guess. I'm running out of time. Uh, we're gonna go for... Where's Barone? Why can't I make Barone? Ah, shit! I got the wrong time! Ah, god damn it. I'm gonna lose because of time! Yeah, I forgot this wasn't a level 8. Uh, have I normal summoned? No. The LP. The LP did nothing! I just wasn't fast enough. Uh, did I win that coin toss? Yes. Oh, whoops. The clock is the true enemy. We got tilted. We didn't get tilted by Sword Soul. <laughs> I mean, it was annoying, but... I'm just new to the deck. Okay, here we are. This is the first real duel. That first one didn't count. We were, uh... <laughs> we ran out of time. I wasn't practiced with the deck. I just need to play faster. I've got to become speed. Ash Blossom. Unfortunate. Or, I'm sorry, Maxi. Unfortunate. Um, yeah, I think we just do this. We're just going to pop lar. We're going to get the field spell. We've got a max C of our own. This gives everything 1100. 
We'll put um, Flamberge face up. There we go. And we'll just uh, set this. We're not playing around Mech Knights. Obviously not the optimal end board, but this deck is fairly decent at playing around Maxi. I mean, obviously you'd prefer, but I can do this and be like, yeah, I've got a negate and I got a big monster and I've got follow up. So it's up to you now. Called by. Of course they had it. You know, if I had waited until they summoned a monster, maybe that would have been better. Although I didn't think that they would play into the imperm column. Hindsight's 2020. Ah, a smash of your own. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, we'll just do this. And I think this is what you want to hit, right? Because then if they don't have oak or one for, or not one, yeah, it had to be like oak, one for one, or where art thou? They might not be able to do much from here. All right. Oh, they've got yeah, the field spell, I guess. Some people do play this at three. Now they can put something in the back row, and then this can... Oh, wait, no, its effect is negated. I think this is still negated even after it leaves the field, if I'm not mistaken. So they can do this, but it won't trigger, and because they don't have two, you have to summon two level one fires. Like, you need two in the graveyard. They will only have one, so this won't be able to summon back this. We can summon their monster. Oh, yeah! During your opponent's turn, target one monster, treat it as a continuous spell card, summon it to your field. And this isn't a quick effect. Yeah, so that's if, if, they, if you're in the mirror match, this can summon their monsters that are treated as spell traps. One of those funny little quirks. Of course, I think this sends for cost, so they could do it now. Okay. Yeah, we'll just do this now. That is a nice Flamberge you have. Be a shame if it was my Flamberge. Thank you. There's two of them! That's twice as many. Smile. Kaiju? Curry Kara! I see! Unfortunately, this doesn't activate either. She's big. Should have waited until the end phase. I mean, the chances that they have Kurikara are pretty low. You have it in your opener too, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see, if I put Flamberge back there, 
Yeah, then they can't steal it with Kurikara. So they get to my Poplar, which is unfortunate because they have targets for that. Yep, I need to draw something pretty good. I guess that's kind of good. Yeah, I don't want to summon anything, because if I summon it, trigger... Okay. Yep, we just end here. And hope they play into Nibiru. Oh, they have game on board, don't they? Well, fuck. I needed to set a card. Yeah, for some reason, I thought I had more life points than that. Oh, were they just playing? Yeah, they're just playing the one Curry Kara. They just happened to draw it. Fortunately, they got the Curry Kara and they got the called by for my Maxi, but I didn't have the called by for their Maxi. I feel like that's a case of the Maxi minigame winning, but I guess you in the comments can tell. I mean, obviously, uh, again, those little quirks, like if I had activated in the end phase, they wouldn't be able to Curry Kara, and then I'd have much more advantage. But I didn't even think about that. Duel 2 versus Snake Eye. Free will, free will. Oh, uh, and that was... Two one coin tosses and two losses. Three coin tosses. All right, duel number three. This isn't good. <laughs> We've basically got this, and if it doesn't resolve, we have nothing. Um, is Imperm once per turn? No. So I think we send this, because that's not doing any us any good. We'll just send this off, because it's the only thing that's not interaction. So we summon Dia Bellstar, send a card from the hand or field. She searches a Sinful Spoils. We get the original Sinful Spoils. Sets it, so I guess it plays around Ash. And then this sends a card from the field to summon a Snake Eye from the deck. Or I guess a level 1 Fire, it looks like. What's the a level 1 Fire? Yeah. So then you go for Ash. And that's why, if you were wondering why people are playing 3-beat Dia Bellstar, it's because she's essentially a, a, another copy of your one-card starter. Arguably, she's better because now you haven't had to use your normal summon. So you could do other stuff from here. You have already used this, though, so we gotta get the Defined Temple. Uh, let's go ahead and make the Link Karibo. Bring back the Poplar. Poplar. You're gonna be Poplar. Uh, let's go for Oak. Professor Oak! What's your gender, opponent? <laughs> 
special summon? Yes. Nibiru. Unfortunate. I think that ends my turn. Yeah. Big token. Oh, uh, do I still play this? Yes. It doesn't. The field can place dragon. Well, yeah, I know that. But what can dragon do from the back row? If you had used the field spell first, oh, okay. You place divine, uh, okay. I'm learning! There are all these neat little interactions. I mean, we have three disruptions, and if they summon anything, the field spell will summon out Flamberge. Flamberge will get Poplar. Poplar will get me another spell trap for next turn. So, we're still in this. Oh, Samurai! The foolish samurai warrior stepped forth to oppose. Uh, yeah, we just do this now. Oh, and Maxi, my favorite. Um, this isn't treated as a continuous spell card, right? So I can't, I can't summon this out of the back row, I believe. It's treated as a pendulum card. So there's no point, that would just be summoning Poplar. Yeah, and this is treated as an equipped card. Also treated as an equipped card. Commander. Yep, nothing I can do about any of this. Now they got scales. And they get to do a searchy do. Battle ball! They're balling, chat! Uh, but not all monsters they control are super heavy samurais. They have this big rock. Fantastic.
Camacio! Um... They do piercing, and they'll get to draw a card. But they'll only get to draw one card, and I'll get two monsters. And it might bait out the Regulus. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, it tributes for cost, so there's nothing I can do. Well, at least they don't get to draw a card. Time. Trying to see if, uh, what do I know they have? Really just that, which can bring back a tuner or this. So I think I might want to use one of my negations on the scales. They can't use the battle ball. Yeah, I can't let them bring back the bike, so let's use one of these. Granted, this is a tuner, but... Yeah, so they might be able to just do this 4, 5, or 8, 9, 10. They could make a level 10, they could make a level 6. Shoot and doji, blow up all the back row. Yeah, I've also got to stop that. <laughs> I can't lose all my back row. What's the last card in hand? Nothing they can use at the moment. Alright, so I'm not dead, but I'm in a bad way. Um, send one other face up, special summon one level one fire. Okay, so I can do this. It has a graveyard effect. Oh wait, no, I was reading the wrong effect. Banish this from the graveyard, target a snake eye or diabelle, add one level one fire, and then put that back, okay. Yeah, so I have a starter, assuming they don't have the Ash. Oh, and there's Bar on the floor. Bonk. Um. Yeah, I might as well, if they want to negate this now, this is going to be useless on my turn. If they use the negate now, then I'll be free to do the stuff I want. Yeah, there we go. So I lose the field spell. But now I can use that card in the graveyard to get Snash and go again. Although, that card in hand is probably a hand trap. Just in time, buddy. Summoning back. 
Oh, they can just put the Therion on there. Okay, I gotta draw something good! That ain't anything good. Oh, we put Oak back and they just negate. Yep, and that's just it. I feel like once again we lost to Nibiru. Well, Nibiru, but mostly uh, Maxi. I guess a little bit of both. Still not doing good. That, yeah, 47 cards, one Nibiru. Good draws. Two Maxi, you don't want a brick on it. Oh, they're making me go first. Unusual. All right, here we are, duel number four. We still haven't, still haven't won a single game. Things have not been going, going our way. Dang old hand trap format, I tell you what. Let's add the Diabell Star. Um, bu 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 I think we've got to lose the Valor. Because we need this if they ash this. Uh, yeah, we'll send that one. Dia Bell Star. All right, use this. Grab the original Sinful. Okay, there's the Imperm. All right, show me the second Imperm. You don't want to use your normal summon on this if you could help it. Ash. No, no, no. I'm the better duelist this time. <laughs> no, no, no. They are the better duelist this time. Hand trap format. Here we come. La, 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 la. Uh, okay, and I banished the ash, so I can't make this and bring it back. Um, hmm. I don't really have any good Link 2s. Do I just make Link Karibo pass? I think it's just Link Karibo pass. Okay. And I can make Phoenix, which does nothing. We'll just keep the Diabell Star. All right, so the fortunate thing is that they used most of their hand, half of their hand. We do still have one negate. So unless the rest of it's gas, we should be good. Uh, let's see. They send the thing, they get the thing. Yeah, I think we just imperm here. Imperm the Vion. 
There's a chance if they drew like another hero and the uh, the pink one, but they didn't. So there we go. We finally won a game. It was just the hand trap wars. Be gone, the hand trap wars have. One fifty five dual four verse and trap hero. <laughs> oh, they're not even playing it. The fuck is this? <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, they're really just going all in on, like, my normal summon has to resolve. What are you even getting with Stratos? Honesty Neos? I don't know. Okay. Dark Hole gets rid of cards. All right, here we are, Duel 5. We get to go first. We open with both the Sinful Spoils and Hand Trap Insurance. That's good. Let's normal summon this. Hello? Snash? Snash met with Ash. Uh, do do. -do. Yeah, I think we do this and hope they don't also have Maxi. Like, I kind of want to save it for the Maxi because I'm pretty sure we could still use this and get to other stuff. That, that's when you're in a hand trap format, it's just got you thinking about like, you know, every possibility. Do we prepare for the, the two hand trap setup? And then we get popular. We're going to be popular. Should have known. I should have known. Okay, they've got a 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43 card deck. Not the most optimal, but not the worst either. We get this, I know. Hmm. I think we just can't afford them to give them any more cards. Uh, let's go... Actually, we can give them one more card. I think that helps with everything. If we make a IP, then we can go into Unicorn during their turn with this, summon these two back, and go plus two more. I've just got to make sure I don't want to use the Poplar effect, because I want to keep them in the graveyard. Yeah. And then we just end there. You what, mate? <laughs> uh, they don't control a token, so they can't negate anything. That just makes this easier. Oh, I forgot it was still... I should have waited until... It's another draw. How retro, yep. So they've got a full five card hand. Wow, tier limit, they're really going retro.
Why not use Flamberge? Because I for Gore. Ah, they're playing a lot of stuff. Many different kinds of things and stuff. Uh, if they send, they can do. I think I want to put this. The thing is, they can make Kit Kalos. Or they can make Rukalos. Or no, they make. Well, no, 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 no. We're fine. Okay. Jet discards for cost. Okay, what are they fusion summoning? Just Rukalos or Kikalos. Yeah. And I think I just want to stop them from doing that. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, obviously, I can't stop this part, but... On the top two cards, that's fine. Okay, now... Yeah, now we want to do this. We gotta stop the Yoinky Sploinky. Gee, Billy, how come your mom gives you two Maxis? Diabelle, I don't know why you're chaining that now. Diabelle doesn't send for cost, though. It sends for effect. So that triggers the tier limits. At least they only get one draw. And then we'll just get two pluses. Okay. One plus. Well, I guess you went minus to stop it. Oh, wait, no, it was already called by. So we'll get that, and. Um, do we get Snash for next turn? No, we have ways. Let's get this. Let's just let him know. We got all the board breaking tools. Yeah, they might be able to OTK me through all this, but there's nothing really I could do. Just got hit by two, two max C's. And I'm playing every possible counter.
I played Gamma in their deck, yeah. At least I got to have some chocolate. Excel Synchron, you don't see that every day. But yeah, I'm thinking as, as cool as like Curry Kara and the Snake Eye spell are, um, because we've got hit by Maxi every single duel, we might need to max out on, like, put Droll in anyway, and put in, um, like, max out on Droll, and maybe Gamma, or just more Nibiru. It's day 752. Zombie vampire. More mill tools. Oh, well, there's my one Nafiru. Oh, and they hit Destrudo. Two of them. Are they playing a rank 7? This late in the game. And now I'll activate Snash. Or not. Level seven. Are they going for AFD? Ancient Fairy Dragon. You know it, buddy! Yep, and that might unironically be what wins them the game, because now all my monsters lose 1100 attack. Now they've got 10,000 minus 30, 10, 9, 8, 7. Oh, you can't conduct your battle phase this turn. Well, there we go. I think they might have goofed at some point. All right, that's cool. Uh, the problem, of course, is that this Curry Kara does fucking nothing. It doesn't do shit. But I mean, we can just like access code talker. I don't have, like, hardly any links in the graveyard is the problem. But that should bait out if they've got, like, a back row or something. 
Yeah, let's just bait out the back row. Uh, we want to do this. Uh, ooh, we put Flamberge. Yeah. And then we do this, and they can't respond to this, which means they can't respond to anything. Howdy, howdy. Now they activate it. Do I have two level ones in the grave? No, not yet. But soon! Uh, yeah, I don't want you doing that. Stop it. I'm trying to remember the graveyard effect of this. Um, target one sinful spoils that is banished or in the graveyard. Uh, this is not a sinful spoils, though. Uh, that's negated. They use this already. Yeah, I just need to find a way to OTK, which is not going to be easy. I need things. Well, let's... Let's start by drawing a card. I'm not going to use the graveyard effect of this. Because I'm going to use the one in my hand. Diabell Star. Let's... Special summon the Diabell Star. We'll send the Poplar. Searchy, searchy. We'll set another one of these. And then we will have two in the graveyard now. So now we activate this. Send off the Flamberge to summon... Ooh, we'll get Oak on the field. Oak will let us go plus a million! Oh wait, no, I don't have any resources for that. Oh yeah, I do. Ah, time! We'll get this one. And then Flamberge, we'll get the other two. And then we've got cards for days. Plus city. Uh, we'll add this last one to hand. We'll add uh, this to hand. And then I think we need to make bar on the floor, right? Or this. Uh, this card destroys an effect monster by battle. Gain. Okay, yeah, this is the time when we need that. Seven, eight. So we use the sinful spoils. We send Poplar. We summon out this. Then we go for Bigman. Uh, we've got a Flamberge. Yeah, we got a Flamberge left. We... 
Activate this. We're just going to move their biggest thing into the back row. Uh, and then we summon it back. Where is it at? Uh, I could just target on the field, right? Oh no, this is the opposite. We put another monster on their field in the back row. Um, you. Uh, shit, 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 shit. Special summon. Uh, we got this, we got this. Go for this. Bring back the other Flamberge. That should be enough for game. I'm not testing it! Destroy her! Fuck. It's no longer in the grave, so I don't get it. Uh, I can make another attack, though. Just do that. <laughs> if we had used Kurikara, you can't use this in the battle phase. Ah. Uh... Blow whale, that's fine. I think they're just squirming. Yes! All right, we did it! We played through the things and we did the things and the Berserker actually won and holy fuck. Oh, the time limit. Oh, I need to get better at doing stuff. Yeah, they knew all they had to do as soon as they brought it out and activated the effect to flip something face down, I just banish it, and then then we're good. <sighs> it's, it's just learning when you can make the extra deck and what to make and what to go into. It ain't easy, but folks. Folks! Uh, dual five versus a big pile of cards. 
you'll have to cut through a lot of silence. Don't be afraid to use text to explain what happened. But it chat seemed to think it was a nail biter, so probably worth keeping. It ain't easy being sneezy. Uh, yeah, let's go again. Let's see if we can lose another one. We might take some stuff out. I think I really need to simplify the deck just for the sake of knowing what my tools are. They're letting me go first. All right. We got Snash, we've got Anti-Maxi, and we've got Anti-Some-Other-Hand Trap. Go Snash! Get me the tools! Get popular, will be very popular. Special summon itself, since you control something. Search me a thing. Uh, I have an Abiru in the deck, so I'm not super worried about it. I think we get the field spell here. Yeah, let's try it. I can never decide which one is better. They both have pros and cons. Let's go for this. Will be popular. Uh, oh yeah, we need to do this beforehand. I gotta remember to do this as early as possible. And I think we put the other Flamberge here? Yeah. Flamberge goes here. We send off the Link Karibo because you can't use it to make IP. Get Oak. Oak brings back the thing. Um, oh, we won't have two. I should have sent this. Uh, I have no way to send this off except to do it now. Um, yeah, it's fine. We send off this. We get a Flamberge. Oh, it's from our hand. Yeah, we get the Flamberge from our hand. This is where we go into IP. Usually the field spells to play around Nib, yeah. And if I'd got the other one, I think I could have done Synchro Plays. Go for Princess. Princess Effect. Bring back the Flamberge. Flamberge, put the thing in the back row. Go for this. Yeah, it's not, it's not right. It's not right, but hopefully it'll be enough. I mean, we'll find out. 
See what they got. Still not too bad, yeah. We've got some redundancies, but again, that's like, you know, if they Lava Golem this, I'll still have the Temple to summon back this one, and then I can use that effect, and I'll still have four, yeah. <laughs> A Kaiju, you say? Um, let's go... The Graveyard effect first, and then we'll use this. So this will summon the Flamberge, so now we just gotta back up. We got the Flamberge. This, we just want to go for these two because we want to leave a spot open for IP. Let's go ahead and search. And search. Poplar, we've already got the field spell, so now we want to get the other one. Or not, they ashed it. Uh, I really don't care. Let's go ahead and use this now. Summon out this. So we bring out that. That gets negated. Ash is going to just get us... I think we just want another Ash. We want to make sure we can do stuff because the Kurikara didn't work out so well last time. Let's grab another copy of itself. And then we'll just use IP here. And we'll go straight into this. One, two, three, four. Oh, I wanted to count that as well. It's fine. It's fine. We still got three negates. And then we'll put the other Flamberge back into the back row so we'll have it for next turn, even if they get rid of this. Birds. Uh, no, but I can negate with this, right? They had lava. Oh, it was Curry Kara. Uh, yeah, I think we need to do this, because I can't allow them to keep the Kurikara. Yep, and there we go. Final card is Ash Blossom. Thank you for coming. It's been... You, you tried so hard and you got so far, but in the end, my level ones were on fire and yours were birds. Uh, two, twenty-eight... Dual six verse Lirolusk. Ash and Ash both win the game. No one out pizzas the hut. All right, one more win and we go into Platinum 4. It's not been great. We're only 50-50 and we just lost the coin toss, but it's fine. We'll get no leg up here. We'll, we'll have, we'll be, we'll be good. He wants to watch. He wants to be closest. Oh, and I'm still going first. That seems to be happening a lot. People making me go first because they want to play into this board, but there's not a lot of great board breakers that like really do what you want to do. All right, I have Ash for the Maxi, so there's that. Horge. 
George. They got something. They're waiting. They're, they're patiently waiting for a track to explode on. They're like 50 cent in their prime. You know, they're going to get shot nine times in the face. Metaphorically. Metaphorically. All right. Let's start with Snash. Let's Snash it up. Bump. 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 Snash it up. And then we get the, the Poplar. Let's be very popular. Let's grab the thing. Last time the field spell didn't work out for us, so let's get let's get this one instead. If they've got shifter, they're not using it. If they've got max C, they're not really using it. Put this in the back row. I'm trying to think, is there some way to make Appalooza before five cards without ruining everything? I don't think so. I mean, there probably is, but I'm not seeing it. Uh, do I get the oak here? I'm thinking too long. No, it's fine. Yeah, we do this. I was like, do I need to use Where Arf Thou now? But no, I can summon something with this and then use it. So we're going for Oak. Oak gets back the Ash. This sends off that. We're going to get Flamberge. And then I believe this is Hector's last chance to look at me. I'm going to make the IP. Summon back these two. Uh, it's not the last chance. It's like, there's gotta be a way to do this, and I'm just not seeing the line. Okay, we bring back this. We activate, we bring back... Ip. We're gonna pee! Uh, now I use Where Art Thou. We're going to get Birch. Birch is a free special summon if you control a fire. So then we can make the Amblo Whale. That unlocks us. Uh, and then we can... One other face-up you control. Do I send the Amblo Whale? No, that doesn't help me. No, I think I just... Again, I, I'm like... And now I'm left with this that doesn't do anything. I could get out of level one, but there's nothing I could make with it. Yeah, I could make formula and go into Barone, but I think I'd rather have all this stuff out here. It's fine, we've got Nibiru Ash, we've got Promethean Princess in the graveyard. 
You could have done the combo better. Yes, I am fully aware of that. I'm just not sure where I messed it up. You don't have Witch, you want to grab the Field Spell? I didn't have the Witch last time, but when I grabbed the Field Spell, it was bad for me. Lightning Storm. Okay, well that cements what I was going to do. So, this is where we activate IP. And we're just gonna make Appalooza with one, two, three, four materials. And then it won't be destroyed by this, because it was made with IP Mascarena. Then this'll activate and get me two monsters out. Let's go for you and you. Go in defense, because we don't have the field spell. And then this'll get me a card. This'll get me a card. Bring back the Poplar. So, we'll summon the Poplar. The Ash will get me the other Ash. Yeah. Even though we've already got Poplar. Poplar will get me the Field Spell. And then we Link Karibo. Tribute off this. And that way, if they try to attack over the Appalooza after, like, baiting out a negate or two, we'll have that. And we'll put Flamberge in the back row, so next turn we can use, like, Snash to trigger it. And there you go. That's, that's a good example of, like, it, it's exactly what I was talking about earlier. I'm aware I messed up the combo. I know there's a way to, like make negates beforehand or get more stuff. I had a card in my hand I didn't use. But even though I didn't play optimally, I still ended on four monster negates, five cards in hand, um, and if they'd summoned something, I still have the Promethean Princess that comes back by destroying something else. And I could just do that all again, plus the Ash and the Nibiru. Just, just crazy. What were they playing? Good question. Let's see what they were playing after we rank up into Plat 4. Ah, ooh. What up the get get on the floor? Everybody go to Plat 4. They were playing Galaxy Eyes. It was Galaxy Eyes. They had the one Lightning Storm and Magic Cylinder and Saga of the Dragon Emperor. I don't even know. I've never even heard of that one. And just, just one Ash, one Maxi, one Imperm. You don't want a brick on it. It looks like they just bought all the, um, the packs that give you, like, a free UR. But yeah. We're officially in the, the, you know, more wins than losses range. 238. Duel 7 versus Lightning Storm. Fourteen card extra. Let me let me go. We're gonna go into solo mode again real quick. Maybe someone else who knows the deck can help me. Uh, sure. Let's see if we can open with, with just what we had last time. Yeah, that's essentially the one card 
Snash version. We get this. Get Poplar. Poplar summons. And you said if we don't have Diabell Star, we want to get the field spell. We activate it immediately to play around Nibiru. What do we place face up? I've been placing Flamberge. Is that generally what you want to put there? Yep, okay. So put Flamberge, and then I assume we still do the like... Link Karibo into this. Get the Poplar. Bring it back. Do we not send off the Link Karibo here? Send Poplar instead of the Link Karibo. Because we've got both now. And I assume go for Oak. And Oak, it doesn't matter what I bring back, just one of the things. And then it's like, I guess I send Flamberge, but as soon as I send Flamberge, you send the Karibo. Wait, if I send Flamberge, but I don't make the thing... No, that only gives me three materials. Send the Link. And summon the other Flamberge. than IP. I thought this there was a route to make like Appaloosa within five summons. Now, it doesn't matter because I already used Oak. And then from there I just know like Princess I guess I would want to summon back the Ash because it has more attack by a hundred than the Poplar. Make this, put the Mascarena here. Then make this so I'm not locked in. Yeah, and so it's just this. And then, like, as soon as the turn begins, summon out this. Or generally, you want to wait for them to do something first, right? Because otherwise they can, like, imperm you. And that makes a three-mat Appaloosa. This summons back these two. Could have made Heat Soul instead of Whale and then drawn a card. Yeah.
grab. Yeah, we always just want to get another Snash. Uh, yeah. Uh, sure, I think this chain... No, it's on resolution. summon Karibo before you summon Princess. Ah, good point. And I just always want to put this in the back row so that I can use it next turn, right? Usually, yes. And then from here, it's just about assembling lethal, which shouldn't be too difficult. Because we can just, like... You too! And I already have a poplar in the grave. Yes, I can afford to take another one. Draw a card. Then make... Oh, whoops. Uh, I need three. Yeah, 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 yeah. For a second I was like, go hard on just getting the, the one card draw. Hi, wolf. And then if I needed to, I could go into... Um, whatchamacallit. Excess code and go from there, yeah. But they, we've already cleared the board. Why Spinos was not in the scale. He was he was being summoned. They were being one of those summoners. Oh, I should have retried. Okay, I haven't really opened with the uh, the sinful spoils version. But help me learn this real quick, chat, and then we'll get back into it. Go until we open that. Well, this is a brick. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing fine. I had a big headache earlier, but now I'm good. Okay, so I've got this, but in cases like this, because I didn't open with her plus a starter, 
I have to just use her to basically do the get the one card combo started, right? Like this is essentially do the same thing I did before. Just instead of normal summoning. This makes Barone instantly. Need to send from field for spoils, yeah. Otherwise, it would make Barone. And then I have to get this. And then this is just the same combo we just did. That ends on the the uh, Appaloosa that we make plus the thing in the graveyard. Uh, this is a brick. Yeah, I need Ash plus Diabell Star. There you go. Normal Ash first. Popular. Yeah, we add the field spell because it's a snake eye card. This can't search it, but can it search the other one? Then we do the Linky Slinky. And then Diabell. Send the poplar. That gets the sinful spoils. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I was sitting here before, like, but if I do that, I'll have, like, I'll have the, uh, Savage, yes, but I won't have, I won't have anything to send with it, except I will because I have this. And I send the Link Karibo to summon the Oak. Because it keeps the counter, it still gets the negate. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. Oh wait, this is where I want to... Yeah. Get Flamberge. Flamberge in the graveyard, summon back these two. And this is where I do this, right? We make the car. I 
And the car draws us a card. Yay, free card. And then we do the thing before. I feel like in this case, we don't want the IP necessarily. Elf. And then use this, and then we have the choice between these two, but I feel like we want to put the formula Synchron here. Oh, but then we have no way to summon it. <laughs> Kept the formula on the field for the elf. Yeah, and then done it. Yeah, now I can't summon because of Promethean Princess. Oh yeah, we had Jet Synchron in the grave. I should have... I could have brought back the Jet Synchron and then done that and then... Yeah, what I should have done is this. We don't need the one for one because we got it. And then we go into Amblo. And that keeps the princess in the grave. And then during the opponent's turn, we summon the formula Synchron. And then we can sync with the, the Savage Dragon or the Flamberge and make a Barone. So instead of getting the three negates from uh, Appalooza, we get the one Omni negate. Could have been Flamberge. Yeah, if we had made Elf, we could have brought back this and then also had IP and Boral. Okay. I mean, so far we haven't been in that situation where we got both of those things. And even if we were, it's likely we'd get hand trapped. It's good to know the full combo, but... Oh, hey, missions. Yay! Yeah, Elf is kind of win more. How far along am I? I'm almost halfway there. I wanted to wait until we got to the very end and then claim it, but once we get to 50, we probably want to put those two in. Okay, we'll keep going for now. I actually got to use the bathroom real quick, but this should only take a moment. I'll be right back. I'm back, and I got a Pringles and a Juice, the best of both worlds. I don't know anything about baseball. There are four bases, so you know that much. Now you learned. Baseball is like anime. Both are played in Japan. Update rank, thank you. Hey, we get to go first again. Go in first. Gonna be the worst. I mean, the best. Damn it! <laughs> I shouldn't let the rhymes command me. Ah, great. We open with both poplars. 
Um, this is why some people play three Poplar. So if I Ash and they... Yep, let's just try it. Howdy, howdy. It's me. That's all they gotta do. Easy peasy. They didn't know that we had awful... You know, it's it's often said of me that I don't know when to surrender. And it's true. Sometimes I stay in a duel way longer than I should. But in general, you should wait at least a play or two. Because it's possible that they, they, didn't, they didn't do it right. Go in first, go in first, go in first all day. Yeah, home run, baseball references. All right, that's a, that's a hand. Poplar is useless in this case. Um, this is gonna be a weird one if we get like ashed or impermed or veilered. Oh, well, they don't seem to have it. So we got the Poplar. You got Droll, maybe. Droll times? Real Droll hours. Now, we don't have access to the Dia Bell Star, so we can't make the Synchro line. We just have to go... Um, we do make this first, though, because this plays around Nibiru, I have learned. That's really the trick to this deck, like, making the plays with this deck not so hard. Learning the meta call of, like, if you sniff out your opponent has this hand trap, how do you play around it? What are the lines to do the things when you want to do the things? Okay, and then we just learned this, right? We have both. So this is when we use the Poplar. Now they Ash. That is the correct spot to Ash. But we've got this. So we can send the Flamberge. We can summon the Oak. And then... Well, we want to do this first. I don't know what they would have. Gamma? This plays around Gamma? <laughs> um, The one with the higher attack. They both use their effects. Oh, wait! No! If I do that, then I can't... Then the flame burst doesn't trigger. Mistakes were made. Um. Ouch. Ah, uh, we could still do this part. I just don't know if. Yep. I done goofed. But this is another case where like, I done goofed, but I don't think it matters much. Unless they've also got Nibiru. I think they've got Nibiru. Yeah. And now I don't have anything in the graveyard. Um, do I just activate this now to put the Nibiru in the back row? Anything can get over this. 
They probably kill me anyway. Oh wait, 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 um... Da, 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 when they summon... Target one card. So if I put this back there, I can summon the Nibiru on my turn just to chump block. Yeah, someone else is like, if it's super heavy samurais, um, putting this in the pendulum zone might screw them up. <laughs> so let's try that, shall we? I mean, they could have done that either way, no matter where I'd put it. Ash the original? Well, yeah. It's a two for one. And then if they didn't open Snash as well, or Poplar plus something else. Oh, no, they're a gamer. Our only hope now is that we can steal something from their back row using the field spell, interrupting their combo, and then once we have it on our side, we can use the princess to pop one of their cards. Now see, in this case, you didn't want to activate this first, because now as soon as they do the Link Summons, I can steal their Flamberge. Oh, they're going to do it now, but they don't have enough level 1s, do they? No. I'm gonna what my IP princess. I could pop the princess with my princess, maybe, if they put this. Yeah, and this I can send back my spell card and then search another Snash next turn. The mirror is really weird.
They didn't activate it. Okay. Going for Hita. Hita to steal my Flamberge, probably. Just any one fire monster. Ah, they're taking the Promethean Princess. But now they're locked into fires. Oh, but they can just OTK from here, right? Yep, don't chain Oak and um, Flamberge. Yeah, and their list is almost identical to mine. They're just playing three Poplar, two Nibiru, hmm, oh they're not playing Where Arf. The trap is a nice option if they max C you and you start with wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. All right. Foolish combo versus a 60 card deck. Yeah. Uh, we... Oh, wait, this is the... Yeah, this is everything. We use this to get Diabell Star. Um... I forget which one we do first. It's Snash first. this grab this that gets me the field spell we activate the field spell immediately put the flamberge then uh do we send yeah we send the jet right Send the jet. We get this one. Then we link Karibo. Put this up here. And then we just activate the jet. Send away the other poplar. Oh, we've got to get rid of the...
Gotta get rid of this if we want to have a negate. Okay, we'll just summon the Flamberge here. Yeah. Flamberge goes here. Then we can make this. There we go. This is Hector's last chance to be aware of my visage. Put this here, and then we activate this. We send off the Poplar, and we summon Oak. Because Oak can summon a level one from Grave or Banished. So that allows us to recycle the Jet Synchron. We'll get it back! We'll get that Synchron back that we lost. And we get to make formula. Vroom vroom! Snakes and race cars! Draw a card. Who doesn't like to draw a card? And that's a pretty good one. Um, and then we make IP, right? Or we make Elf. Yeah, 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 yeah. We make Elf. And that way they can't target this. I'm getting there. I'm figuring out the five-dimensional chess. So let's summon back... This and this. I don't think I've used both of those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Then we activate this. We can send off the Link Karibo. That allows us to... Oh, we don't have another Flamberge left. Welp. Uh, okay, this isn't working out quite how I wanted, but I think we still got it. Again. We go ahead, we make Promethean Princess with you three. Then this brings back the Flamberge. Oh, but we're stuck with the princess on board again. Gosh darn it. Okay, well we can bring that back. Oh, wait. Uh, no. If we put that in the spell trap zone where it doesn't do anything. Oh, fuck it. We're putting her in the spell trap zone. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I'm just dumb as hell, alright? <laughs> Let's just draw another card. I'm just clicking buttons at this point. That's, that's probably fine. It's, it's probably good. I mean, I can still... I guess we make the Amblo Whale, because that's better than nothing. Okay. And then we end. Okay, it's very weird. We went in a roundabout way. Just call me the ending of JoJo, because we went roundabout. But I think this still does it. I'm so sorry. 
Never mind. Alba Lentis. Uh, cannot be used by sending this card can attack a number up to the materials used for it. During the end phase, if it was in the graveyard, because it was there this turn. Uh, yeah, we activate this. We'll summon you! I don't think I need to destroy that, because everything we have is bigger. And we'll go ahead and do this. Bird. I cannot negate Le, Le Bird. I guess I should have destroyed this with the princess. Interesting. Um, oh. Oh wait, that's not in the middle. Should have put it in the middle zone. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think we do this now. I don't want this thing to be around. Oh, and now I can't summon Dia Bell Star. All my locks are not in order! Haha! I had Ash the whole time! Of course I did! Oh, uh, we'll just say no. Okay, there there we go. Once again, I bumble fucked my way into victory. I didn't learn anything about what I was supposed to do. <laughs> Deck just too good. <laughs> Bumblefuck power go! This deck is so strong. <laughs> Another excellent home run, sir. Do, do I include? I don't feel like I include that. You learnt it. <laughs> You're fine until diamond, but what happens when I get to diamond? Is the mirror fun? The mirror's interesting. I'm not good enough to know if it's, like, fun. Garote! I mean, I think I win this one. Um, go Dia Bell Star. Fetch me the tools. Oh, uh, yeah, we just do the standard combo.
popular. We're going to draw popular. Okay, we get this, we put this here. We link our Karibo. Put this in the back row. Oh wait, no, we send off the Link Karibo in this line. So we can Oak. Sure, we'll bring this back, it'll be funny. Sure, free draw card. Formula Synchron! Vroom vroom! Alright, that's alright. Uh, no, we want to go for... Or do we? Oh yeah, we have to go for this, because otherwise we won't have enough for the thing, yeah. We do this. We get back... These two. Go, go, gadget, princess. Princess brings back you. Yeah, the IP is probably the best. I can... Uh, no. We'll just set these. Okay, we're good. We're good, we're set, I'm fine. I don't need to exist. Why would I want to exist when I could... When I could um... I'm trying to think of an alternative to existing. I'm, I'm not drawing anything. I ain't thinking of nothing. They're thinking, chat. They're, they're cooking something up. They got gears grinding around, doing stuff. They went home. This wasn't their game to win.
ancient gears probably i mean if it was it'd be funny they're going for that timeout whoa, whoa hey um psychic bounder I mean, sure. It's Jinzo. It's not delivery, it's Jinzo. Nani the fuck? Oh, and I guess I'll summon this. So we've got it ready. We're ready to go. Dark Ruler no more. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Consider our ruler darked. Or I guess it's no longer darked. Or he's no longer a ruler? I don't know what's going on. Can Jinzo out three big dudes? I don't think so. Cursed bamboo sword. They're gonna be bamboozling chat. If they're a masochist deck and they made it to Platinum 4, they're doing really good. And also they've got consistent combos. Alright, they're drawn. This is not a masochist deck. It might be a really lucky masochist deck. Okay, when another monster controls attack before damage calculation, destroy both monsters. All right. Goodbye, IP. You won't pee. That's another monster, right? Um... I just, like, win here, right? Like... Flamberge can be like, hey you, stop it. Have you considered being a spell? Spells are neat. Uh, what happens here? Jin, uh, Mirror Force? Would a Jinzo deck play Mirror Force? Doesn't appear. I can just like, excuse me, just put, move aside, please. I need to OTK you. Oh, oh, okay. Please check the deck. I'm baffled. I'm bamboozled. I'm smeckledorfed. Terminal world, chat. They're they're on their terminal, all right. I can't tell if this is like 
some sort of crazy combo. Like, they've got a draw engine, right? With the three bamboo swords. And they're playing, like, a bunch of extenders. But, like, why would you play one Psy Reflector? Like, it's a rare. You could, you could get more. Unless they have some way to search it. Yeah, that's Burning Bamboo Sword. <coughs> so I guess, if, is it a combo to like... Uh, some way to get out Burning Bamboo Sword and Terminal World so they can skip both the main phases? <laughs> Like, I guess, like, they skip both the main phases, and then they put Jinzo to stop you from getting traps, and then they put Fossil Dina to stop you from special summoning. And I don't know how they're stopping spells, though. I guess with Braver, that's gotta be the only thing they're making with Psy Reflector, because it's their only Synchro. And I guess they got all the equip cards. No, that only negates monster effects. Instant contact for free level 7. Time tearing Morganite, but just one. Two is Bricky. You don't want to draw it in your 50 card deck. Assault mode package next to Braver. Yeah, I, I really don't know. Because they're playing a lot of extenders, but like, not good extenders. Plat is wild, I tell you what. Oh, one second, I got like a million messages. I don't know. Weird. Weird and not in like, a, it's only interesting afterwards. I don't think I'm going to include that. I'm trying to not make these episodes quite so long. Oh, I'm actually going second. Holy shit. I think that's the first time this has happened all day. We've only lost the coin toss four times and three of those times they made us go first for some reason. And I mean, we've got, like, a really good going second hand. <laughs> Opening with Poplar, alright. They got the Temple. Why would you go for that? I guess they must already have the other one. I should have activated that first. Okay, putting something in the back row. And then what? I really, I guess I really should have max seed earlier. Uh, I think we imperm here. I kept waiting for them to activate something. I keep forgetting this deck has so many like non-chain starting. All right. 
sucks a little bit. Birch. Son of a birch! Uh, we can still do this, though. Uh, they get to summon... Flamberge, and then Flamberge can summon Poplar, but that doesn't really like, do anything for him, right? Yeah, well, I guess I can maxi on my turn and get all the stuff. There we go. Go maxi! Dragon. Oh, hey. A maxi of my own. Or an ash blossom of my own. Okay, and then we're going to wear Arf Thou. And we're just going to search uh, Poplar. When Poplar is searched, it's summoned. Doesn't have to be searched off of Snash. I see, I see. Oh. There's a different animation for the other Ash. Or did they change it for... I don't think I've seen that. Does it only work when you Ash something on the... I don't know. Either way... Um, do we just go straight into Mascarena here? Oh no, no, we can actually make Hita. Yeah, 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 yeah. He does cool. Yeah. The Fire Charmer. And then Poplar will go into the back row. Do, 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 do. And then I can be like, hey, uh, give me the Feet Ash. It's mine now. El Guapo. Uh, and then we can Diabell Star. Send off this. Howdy, howdy. It's me! The real Freddy Fazbear. And they've got hand traps as well. Oh, uh, I can just make Barone, because this is a tuner. Yeah, I think that's... Because I don't have Flamberge. I don't have a way to get that. That's already been activated. Barone gets me the most utility. Yeah, so we just go like, hey, how's it going? Um... They don't have any one stars to summon is the problem. I could try to pop this, and then if they summon it, I'll be able to Karikura this. Or I could just pop the Divine Temple and stop them from having access to it. Yeah, I think we're going to do this. Oh, okay, they're doing it anyway. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I ain't using my negate on that. I get to draw a card. Oh, boy. Uh, sure. What do you know, chat? Isn't that isn't that convenient? I was like, the problem is the Dia Bell Star. If I destroy it, stuff happens. But what if I didn't destroy it? What if the Dia Bell Star just became spell? 
And then the other two monsters um, activated their effects, so... Divine Carnate! Would it be... Should I just... You know, this has got me thinking, like, maybe I should just make a go second version. There's so many cool tools at this. Being able to divvy Carnate and, and go into Barone and... Uh, I guess it's just... I just like Divi Carnate. It's such a fun card. Oh, well, there you go. I finally went second, and I did a thing. We we did it. It worked. Uh, 347. This was dual 8. 12. Snake Eyes again, but we went second. Have any of my go second builds worked? No. One second, chat. After a rough start, we're going good. We're going to get into plat three. Let's go ahead, hit that go first. We have been winning a lot of coin tosses. Statistically, this is going to level out. Why is why does his head always want to... He wants to look. He doesn't want to... There we go. That, that, there we go. That looks nice. Look at him up there just doing stuff. Oh, hey, and we opened things. Uh, I think we want to start with this because this is just like ash bait. The Abelster! And we want to start with this, though. Hello there. Um... I think we want to save it in case they've got Maxi 2 or Valor. Let me think, what do I send? I send the Flamberge, because we can bring that back eventually. E yeah, we're fine. Okay. So then we can Diabelle, send the Flamberge, because it ain't doing anything in our hand. Yeah, they probably don't have Maxi and Nibiru won't work. I probably should have done that, but I'm so... You know, this this really is a deck where, like, get hit with one hand trap, you're fine. Get hit with two, shit. Plus at this, yeah, there we go. <laughs> they had one hand trap, we could play through it. I, we probably could have done it faster if we had just done the called by and been like, nope, your ash is useless. But there we go, we won, look, we got to the 50th part in the thing. Ah, what are you doing over there? You ce he's celebrating a little too hard. He's just a little goofy goobler. Good old no legs. Walking around, and there we go. We got, we got ranked up. 
win number nine. It's not going quite as fast. We're almost to the end of the first stream. But maybe if I, I rush, we can at least get to like plat two. Who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll see. First though, we gotta change out our stuff. Dual 13. Versus Ash. Receive all! I got 655 gems, chat. A minty frame. And 76 uh, ultra rare. Oh. Okay, um... Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, what do I need to do for my proficiency exam, by the way? Oh. Oh, I just... Yeah, I. <laughs> For some reason, I thought I still had practical stuff to do. It turns out I've just been waking, waiting to take the test. I need to take the test on camera. So, um, you know, let's take the test on camera. I'm still working my way up. This will hopefully get us to level 10. We'll just take a little break. We'll have a little break. Thank you, Pontacon. Study for the exam. What is the name of this card? Uh, Masaki, the legendary swordsman. That's not the Zapper, right? It's not a Six Samurai. I have no idea. I think that's an OCG only card. What is the name of this card? It's not Guitars. It must be the bass then, right? There's two Guitars. Okay. What is the name of this card? It's not Hang On Mock. Sonic Meister... Sonic Meister? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I know some of them. What type is this card? It's a warrior, right? The Butter Spies are all warriors. Even though they look like they should be insects. What is the name of this card? Uh, it's Rush Warrior. No, it's Dash. Excuse me. I think I, I, I already missed 10, right? What is the name of this card? Rocket Arrow Express. I know that one. That's a good one. Uh, which of the following does not have three heads? Trident Dragion? Wait, no. Cyber End Dragon is not the... No, it is the three-headed. I assume this one? Oh, wait. I knew that. I'm dumb. I've been tilted. If your infinite impermanence is in the same column as your opponent's skill drain and there is a feck monster, um, it can be activated. Uh, it cannot be activated because you can't negate a monster because they're already negated. A pity I already lost. What is the name of- That's not fair! <laughs> is it Doitsu, Soitsu, Eitsu, or Koitsu? I don't know. He got that booty, so he a doit. No, he a soy. He's a soy boy. What type is this card? It's a fairy, right? Or a spellcaster? I know it's not these two. I think it's a fairy. Yeah. I'm surprised they had so many ruling questions earlier on, and this one's just like, name this card. What is this card's name? Okay, let's try again. At least we get to listen to more of this music. Okay, we know this one. It's Dash Warrior. Mrs. Dash, as I call her. Uh, at the beginning of the battle phase of your turn, the cards on the field are as follows. The opponent has a monster with 2,500 attack and 1,600 defense, and a defense position with 2,500. You have a 3,000 attack, the 
2600 attack and 1700 in a defense. What is the highest possible damage that could be inflicted with your attack? Just making me do math. Okay, so they've got 2500. Attack position with 16, attack with 25. So I move my defense position monster to attack. I attack over the 2500. That does 15. Then 17 over the 16. So that's 16. Um, 26, 30 for a... Uh, 55. 1500. It's the bat. Oh, I guess it's already the battle phase. Okay. Bitron. How much information is available about it? Not much. <laughs> sure, why not? What is the name of this card? Uh, it's not Loyal Guan Yun. It is Virtuous Luzon. I know my ancient warriors a little bit. What is the name of this card? Arfaduder. It's fun to... S oh, Arfaduder's the other one. What type is this card? I haven't played the Makankos. They're psychics, right? No, they're fairies. Shit. In dark solo mode, the pendant wears around his neck is seen to be a memento of whom? His partner. His wife. Or girlfriend. Uh, we already know this one. It can't be activated. Uh, what is the name of this card? Sonic Meister. Question number 10. What is the name of this card? It's the guitars with two S's. Is that, do we, do, no. Seven out of 10, I missed one too many. Okay, third time's a charm, we got this. I believe, just gotta go fast. 1.25 speed, not much. Wait, they moved him around, fuck. Okay, that's, that's Kelbeck. Okay, fuck, let's, let's try it again. That was a Gito that the... No, it wasn't a Gito. Fuck. I get them all mixed up. Uh, this is the beginning of the yada yada 1500. Uh, what is the name of this one? It's, uh, Keldo. Not Kelbeck. Kelbeck's the weird one. Gito's the one. Medora's the guy. Okay. Question number three, in Alliance for Justice, which of the anti-worm Alley of Justice is considered a masterpiece never seen before? It's gotta be Cataster, right? Like it's the, the weapon, the good one? The one that works? It's a uh, Sonic Meister. They move them around, I keep expecting it to be where it was before. Which of the following effects cannot be activated during the damage step? Um, counter trap, shrink, ash blossom can't be activated in the damage step, right? I didn't think ghost bell could either. <clears throat> All right. Uh, which of the following does not have three heads? ABC Buster Dragon has three pieces, but one head. Um, that's Mrs. Dash. Uh, Rocket Arrow Express. Question number nine, his partner. Okay. And that doesn't matter what the 10th one is. By this point, we've won. But let's just say, what's the name of this card? Uh, gr I'm going to assume just from all the like feathery stuff that this is graceful. I don't actually know because that's not one that you play very often. All right. Look, my IQ went up, chat. You take a test, and then you learn the answers to it. There's no such thing as a test you can't study for. You just keep taking it until you get it right. Anyway, we got a bike. And now we're on we're on level 10. We're at the very end. Oh, we got to get 5 of 5. What are the clear conditions? 
Complete it. Destroy a hundred cards. All right, we'll be there for a while. Um, do we just go ahead? Do we just do another test? Are you tired of tests? Fuck it. Let's try it. Let's see how good. We'll get one try at it. First time go. Question number one. What is the name of this card? Um, that's the fearsome. Right? Yeah. He's pretty fearsome looking. Uh, which card is depicted in the illustration of Super Factorial? Sigma? Nabla. I can't, I can't tell. They're all small and everything. Which of these wallpapers is in a well, construct? I mean, I already lost, but at least we could see. Uh, which monster is depicted? It's a uh, lava battle guard. Clearly, they protect each other. What's the name of this? It's localized tornado. So I could probably, you know, I got four out of five. We're good. I'll come back and finish it later. We've done enough question answering. I really don't understand how, how like, how is this an academic exam? Like, name this card that's never played. They should give you, like, stuff that's actually, like, pertinent to playing the game. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's jump back into stuff. If you had a degree in Yu-Gi-Oh, you would understand. Okay, we're at our time, but we're gonna go a little bit further. We're gonna go until we lose. And we're gonna lose until we go. Oh, there's a squid. I don't know if any uh, moderators are around. For the Discord. I make you type out the Joey Wheeler <laughs> card text. From memory? Prof has it handled awesome. Thanks to Prof. All right, we good. We good, we golden, we good, we golden, we good. We good, we golden, we good, we golden, we got stuff. Good in doing things, what you wanna do and sing. Everybody's got the stuff, Dia Bell Star. I'm a star. I got this one too. Yeah, thing? No? Popular, we're going to be popular. I don't know what you say, or if you're gay, you're gonna be popular. Uh, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. yeah, we get this one because she can search the other one. Plug that in, place a card, flamberge. And then we make the Linka Karibo. There we go. And then we put this right here. And then we Diabelle. We're gonna send the Link Karibo. Chunk. And then this searches the other one. Okay, I think I finally learned the combo. And then this can send off Poplar to get this guy. Last chance to look at me, test run. Now we can go real negate hours. Savage! And then Savage can equip the Link Karibo for one negate. No! <laughs> Misclick of the century! I'm an idiot! I've made a big mistake! Oopsie doopsie. Okay. So now we get no negates. 
I went to click on this and they're like, you want to activate it, right? <sighs> okay, so we can one for one. Yeah, one for one gets us another Ash. We have to get rid of the... I think the Nibiru is what we want to get rid of. Yep, and then we just try again. Let's go for Oak. Oak will bring back this. And then we activate this. We'll send off that. Summon another Flamberge. And then we activate this Flamberge, which summons back these two. I thought I finally, I, I mean, I, to be fair, I did have the combo. I just, I clicked the wrong thing. Okay. Vroom vroom, go car. Draw me a car, duh. That's a pretty good one. I mean, it's pretty clear they don't have Nibiru here anyway, so we're probably good. Nibiru pass. Um... Yeah, I think it's clear they don't have any hand traps. So we're gonna send off the called by to summon this. And then that allows us to do the, um, the like IP line. It allows us to pee. IP, go winky face. Special summon the princess. Uh, yeah, although then we'll be kind of stuck. A little bit, a little bit. Get this, we put... Yeah, we're gonna put this in the back row. And then we're gonna make Amblo Whale. So now we can't really go into Appalooza. But if they summon something, the field will get this, and then we can make something, we've got Maxi. We had, we had the full combo to do, like, everything, and instead we ended up with a worse combo than normal. It could have been way too strong, yeah. It could have been amazing. Well, there goes one negate. <laughs> it is before the end of the main phase. If they evenly me, I would be in danger. Yeah, so I think we just do this. Oh, okay. Neat. It it still it doesn't matter how often I mess up. It's we still we still get to it. Huh. 
Huh. They did have Evenly, but yeah, if they didn't have another Kaiju, uh, there's no way they could play through the Apo. I just want to show you. I've seen the combos. That's the, it's just retaining them. It's retaining them and it's doing the combo when, like, I know the combo if I'm uninterrupted and I'm on an open board. Like, I had it that time, I just misclicked. I activated the wrong thing at the wrong time when I didn't mean to. The thing that gets me is, like, when you open weird or you get, like, double hand trapped and then trying to figure out the combo from there. Uh, this imperm has to go hard. Double draw. Retaliating CEO, it's birds. Burb. Uh, yeah, we just gotta have to do this and hope they don't have the thing. If they have the thing, it's over anyway. Huh. That's not the expected thing, yeah. That allows them to go, but they don't get to, like, Ultra Plus. They can tribute face down, but then Rabina doesn't get banished. Yeah, and I guess their, like, end pen's really good if, if you've got, like, nothing but links. The thing is, I'm not sure exactly how I clear the end pen. Flamberge them into the sun. Flamberge in defense, move it into the back row. Great. Uh, subversion if we play it. Yeah, good point. Underworld Goddess, don't have it. Okay, so we got Diabell. We can summon Diabell. I think we send the Jet Synchron. Yeah, because then we can send the Max C to get the Synchron back. In defense. Yeah, and then this sets the subversion. Okay, they've got that now.
Ryza probably. I assume and they just... Oh. Huh. They need another Aglin, they fucked up. Yeah, I guess shame concede. Yeah, because I feel like all they had to do was get Apex Avian. Because they already had this. So they could just use that to send my back row away. And then make... Apex Avian. And then with one negate and my back row gone, there's like nothing I can do. Especially the other back row had to be what, like... If it was this, they would have used it. So probably Cosmic or Called By or Enemy Controller or Book of Moon. All of those would have screwed me over. Oh, did I win the coin toss? Yeah. Gotta mark that down. Uh, pa pa pa. I think I get rid of the Curry Kara. Everything else is like really good going first. It's a strange one, but this is full combo. It's full combo again, unless they have two hand traps. Or they're playing a hand trap I don't have, like, uh, Ghost Bell. Okay. We get that. We send it. They Ash. But we have the Cross Out. So we can send the Royal Ash, and there we go! Easy peasy. <laughs> Alright! High stakes duel! Can I get this on my head? We lost a coin toss again! Rarely happens, but when it does... Okay, we're going second. So far, we've been... Last time, I was like, we keep going until we lose, and we haven't lost yet, and this is a hell of a hand going first. Kylo. Ren? Perhaps? Update the rank. Oh yeah, we're on P3. We're about to be P2. Uh, yeah, go Maxi. Does Maxi win the game? No, they had an Ash. Maxi minigame failed. Monk of the Ten Year. Um, special summon one tenny from the deck. Yeah, I think we allow that. What are they gonna do? Shaman of the tenny. Hiya! Yeah, and they would have been able to do that either way? No, I think I would have left them without anything in the graveyard.
Ah, fuck. I was like, it's okay, we can stop them from getting to Long Wan, but they already had Long Wan. Yeah, they can't make Barone because they're locked into worms, I believe. Although this is pretty bad for me. By special summon, they can banish a monster. So they're gonna have a banish and a negate. We need to ash the... Oh, we can't. Uh, you can send one sword soul or worm from your deck to the graveyard. That's fine. Moye? Yep, I think unless I draw, like, exactly Kurikara, I'm fucked. I should have ashed the very first thing. Yeah, go ahead. Goodbye, Dia Bell Star. Yeah, and then I have to ash this because otherwise they get Protoss. Yep, that ain't it. Yeah, I don't think anything does it. Like, I could get Poplar, search Poplar, summon, but they'd banish it. They've got two banishes for my monster, so either way it gets banished. They can negate it with this. I can get rid of one. But if I get the... Okay, one second. Okay. Just wanted to do burn damage. I mean, I guess that works. Okay, so Poplar. And last card is Ash. Well, they just they just had everything, chat. I'm not sure there's anything I could have done that would have gotten me out of that situation. Sometimes you just lose.
Yeah, to be fair, they drew like four cards over the, the course of the turn. Yep, okay, so we made it to plat three. I might play a little bit offline, but pretty good for, for first uh for a first go. Imagine. Imagine all the people being all the stars. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, I'll have to look at this. I'm I'm thinking, um, because the big problem I'm running into, maybe I should do this here real quick. Uh, how many decks do I have? Okay, I can copy this one. We need Zelantis. Like, Zelantis wouldn't have won me that that game. Okay. I think we just want to make things more consistent. Oh, uh, this has won me. Decree, WFWE, thank you for the prime hype. I don't really like one for one all that much. Um, what's the, we could also, now nah, we'll just, we're going to try from total consistency. Sinful Spoils? We do have Sinful Spoils at three. Not oh no, it's a decode, I forget. Yeah, heat soul, okay. Yeah, I guess so that's the the alternative chat. We could do this, or we could be like um And be like, Droll. Crow. I guess this would be... Like, we could do one of this to search off of Max C, and then get each of these. No, it's just if you control level one, add a level one. I think I just want to try three Nibiru for now. Okay, so then we're on like the full link deck. So then we can play like Anima. We can play Zelantis. 
And Celine, I always forget what Celine does. Uh, do, 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 number of spells. Yeah, so that just lets us get back the effect failure for free. Yeah, and the elf doesn't really do a whole lot without that, so then we can put, like, dark. She also summons back Witch. I mean, Diabelle. I mean, yeah, but you have to have seven spells in the grave. Oh, it's just remove three. Okay. I thought it was equal to the level. For some reason, I thought Celine was gain counter is equal to the number of spells and then summon back a, a spellcaster whose level is equal to the number of counters. But it's just three for any spellcaster. Underworld Goddess, that would be pretty good. It's another good um, IP target. It's either that or Zelantis, but I feel like I should learn how to play Zelantis. Okay. I don't think you'll have enough stuff for White Woman. We, we clearly will. It's not that hard to get like, IP is two, and then we need three, four, and an opponent's monster for five. So all we need is like IP with Flamberge and, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Amblo Whale. And then you link them off and then the Amblo or the, the Flamberge triggers and you get two more. Boral load? I don't have any tuners. Okay. Also need to put Jet back in. Now, I feel like I'm, I'm running into too much. Later, I'll explain it. All right, so we've reached the end of session one and we, we ran into quite a few problems. We had a little bit of difficulty. Um, I should, I should, okay, let's try that again. All right, so we're at the end of, um, Session. Okay. All right, so we're at the end of stream one. I'm calling it for tonight, but after playing a full four hours of this and trying it out, uh, I think I have, I have a better understanding of how the deck works. And specifically, I understand that I don't understand. <laughs> okay, let me, I can, I can rephrase this. All right, so we're at the end of session one. I've been playing this deck for about four hours now, and I think I've come to an understanding. Not quite about the deck, I still don't quite understand it, but I understand that I don't understand it, and I've decided to make things a little bit simpler. We got rid of a lot of the one-ofs that were filling up the deck, and we got rid of pretty much the entire Synchro engine. I just decided that trying to decide between like going into synchro lines or link lines was kind of giving me choice paralysis. I really need to focus on just what the deck can do in general. So we're playing this link focused version, what I call slink eyes, cause, cause snakes like slink along, you know? 
Um, basically, we just took out all those. Now we're playing three Effect Veiler, three Nibiru. So we've got a more consistent uh, hand trap line. We might end up like putting another thing like Droll or DD Crow in here and maybe bumping these down to two if we find we're bricking them on them too much or we're getting like too many in the hand at the same time. But for right now, I think with this, it's like we can guarantee that we're gonna open with either Veiler, Maxi, Ash, Nibiru, Infinite and Permanence, hopefully two of them, so that, because again, this deck struggles to play through two interruptions. One, they're fine, but two, we're good. Also, just, you know, maximizing the amount of hand traps we can draw off of Maxi, and then just changing out the extra deck so it's all links. We've got Anima in here, there's more removal with the level ones. Sunlight Wolf can bring stuff back. Heat Leo to draw into more of those, uh, those hand traps. Plus, just having more fires allows us to make use of Amblo Whale's second effect. I don't think we've ever triggered this, but like, uh, let's see, if a card is destroyed, target one link three or lower in your graveyard, special summon it. And sometimes that happens when what's her name is out. Usually, like, she'll pop him or pop, he'll get popped while she's there. So it's good to have some like link three or lower fire monsters that we can bring back under that. We added Dark, everyone kept suggesting this because it can bring back Dia Bellstar and then get you a search. Uh, we're playing Selene, which can bring back either Effect Veiler or Dia Bellstar and then Link Up. And Zelantis, which is a really weird card. I'm still kind of trying to get my head wrapped around all its effects because it does, does weird stuff, but it's like a Link 4 that you can make with one monster. So if you go into the Amblo Whale, you can go into this and it like resets the entire board. During the main phase, banish all monsters on the field, then special summon as many monsters that were banished to their owner's field face up or face down. So you like rearrange everything and you can put it face down. It's really weird. Anyway, we're gonna be playing this version of the deck. <laughs> Fuck. That was like almost good, but I, I feel like that, I, I need to make this shorter. Shorter, faster. Um. Ard Wolf in the comments. Let's do that and see if anyone does it. Okay. And then summon her back and then pop a guy and then you... Yeah, it has a second effect if things are co-linked. It's weird. Okay. Alright, so we've made it to the end of stream one. I'm not dueling anymore to... to okay. All right, so we made it to the end of stream one, and after spending about three hours playing this deck, I've come to a realization. I still don't really know how to play this deck. I, I'm getting better at it, obviously, but there's just so many different lines and so many different ways you can go. And I think if, pff, fuck, I had it really good the last time and now I can't remember how I said it. Okay. All right, so we've made it to the end of the first stream, and after spending about four hours playing this deck, I think I've come to an understanding. Not about how this works, but I understand that I don't understand how it works, and that if I'm going to, I need to simplify things a little bit. I really wanted to play the synchro version that, like, did a whole bunch of synchro summoning during the opponent's turn, because, I mean, Godi's like my favorite deck and Chris Drons. I really like syncing on the opponent's turn, but uh, it, it was just getting too complicated trying to figure out when I go into that, when I go into links. So instead we've streamlined everything. This is version two, which I call Slink Eyes because it's just based on all these link monsters. And in addition to taking out the tuner, we also took out the curry Kara. We took out the one-off spell trap, just getting rid of all those one-off cards that kind of made the hands more variable, gave it more options, and instead just streamlining it. We're now playing three Effect Veiler, three Nibiru. Oh, we are still playing the one, damn it. <laughs> Do I want to keep this in? 
Yeah, because anything else... I could play a third Poplar. Now nah, we'll keep it in. Although I do need to redo that again. Gosh darn it. Okay, we're almost there. Sorry, chat. This is what, take five? Take six? Something like that. Alright, so we've reached the end of the first stream, and after playing this for about four hours, I think I've come to an understanding. Uh, not, not understanding the deck, but understanding that I don't understand the deck. <laughs> Got that? Okay. I keep, I keep laughing, and it's not even that funny, and I don't want to be that guy who just laughs at his own joke. Okay. We got this. Critter for, for strength. Alright, so we've made it to the end of the first stream, and after playing this deck for about four hours, I, I think I've come to understand it. Or not understand- I understand that I don't understand it. <laughs> Damn it. How dare you produce content! <laughs> Well, some people, I, I'm not sure how many people are, like, aware that these are just for recording stuff and you're here to keep me company. If you think of these as, like, actual streams, it's like, wow, Joe's, he just keeps repeating himself over and over again. Alright, so we've made it to the end of the first stream, and after playing Snake Eyes for about four hours, I think I've come to an understanding. Not about how to play the deck, but I've come to understand myself. And the fact that I don't know how to play this deck very well. So I, I've decided to streamline things a little bit. I really like the synchro version of the deck that makes the uh, synchro plays. <sighs> no, these are actual streams. These are fake streams. I'm sorry, if you thought you were watching a real stream this whole time, you've been deceived. This is a fake stream. Alright, so we've made it to the end of the first stream, and after playing this deck for about four hours, I think I understand uh, that I don't understand this deck. Like, it's it's still, it's still not quite clicking for me, and I think part of that is just how complicated the deck is, how many one-ofs I had, and the fact that you could pivot into synchros or links. I constantly had, like, choice paralysis trying to decide, like, do I go into the jet synchron here or do i keep going and doing link plays so in order to alleviate that and make it easier for me to understand we've just eliminated that possibility instead we're going for a pure link variant what i call slink eyes which just gets rid of all the synchro stuff and replaces it with a toolbox of link monsters now this is going to be a little bit more complicated in another way because now i have more choices about what links i can make but hopefully that should keep it a little more simple. Instead of, you know, trying to figure out the main deck and the extra deck, I just do the main deck plays, and then it's all about figuring out what I make from there. And we've got quite a few tools. I won't go over all of them. A lot of them are things that are played in other versions of the deck, stuff you're probably familiar with from other decks, and we'll cover them when they show up in the duels. As for the actual main deck, uh, again, we just, we removed the tuner, we removed uh, the Curry Kara, I, I think we removed something else. But we're just streamlining, so we're playing three Effect Veiler and three Nibiru now. So between that, the Ash, the Maxi, and the Infinite Impermanence, we've just got a big array of hand traps, and hopefully we can open the two that we need in order to stop our opponent from playing if they're also on Snake Eye. <clears throat> Kurikara, yeah. Because that really seems to be the threshold, right? Just the fact that this deck can play through one hand trap, but not two. It can play through Nibiru, it can often put up a negate beforehand, but if you get Nibiru plus Imperm, then, then you're good. Okay, let's try it. Because that seems to be the threshold, right? The deck can play through one hand trap, but it struggles with two. So now our deck is like... 50% hand traps and 50% one card starters with just like a, a couple other little tech cards here and there. So I'll be taking this next time. I'll be in a new shirt, a new, new attitude, new... Okay. Sunny Top Cut Podcast. Welcome. Streaming with a party of six. Uh, you came right at the end as I'm trying to put something together for YouTube. Uh, where was I? Fuck. Um, 
Okay. The two hand traps. Because that seems to be the threshold, right? Like, Snake Eyes can play through one hand trap, but it struggles with two. So now our deck is like 40% hand traps, 40% one card starters, and then a, a little bit of tech card. So hopefully we should be able to, whether we're going first or second, open with two hand traps and two starters so that we can play through our opponent's hand traps. That's, that's all this deck is going to do. And as I said, we're at the end now, but I'll be trying this next time. You can look forward, I'll, I'll be here again. It'll be a brand new day. I'll have a different shirt. It'll be neat. It'll be neat. Let's 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 go go see what that's doing now. Okay. Hopefully. Happy to ruin the moment. I appreciate I'll make sure to block all of you from now on. You're not allowed. Okay. Deck version two. Uh sorry again for all the mistakes but the last take should be goodish i think you're too hard on your takes possibly i just want to make i just want to make it easy on the editors you know but yeah if you're just joining in from the raid we're we're just ending things <laughs> you came here right as i was about to leave but if you like watching, I'm Hard Leg Joe. If you didn't, I guess there's other there's there's a chance there's new people here in general. So I'll give you the whole spiel. If you're new in general, I haven't streamed in a month anyway, you know. So it'll be it'll be a little there. There might be some some people who don't know. One second, there we go. But yeah, I'm Hard Leg Joe. If in you didn't know, I stream every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, and I, I have a show on YouTube. You can see the YouTube link up there. Someone will link it in the, the chat. They're pretty nice. YouTube.com slash HardLegGaming. Every month I climb the, the Master Duel ladder with a different deck as chosen by my patrons. Uh, usually it's like a weird jank rogue deck or whatever. Like I've climbed with Ojamas and the Egyptian Gods and um, what was the previous one? Earth Machine? It's like an old ass deck. Really weird. Um, but this month they decided they wanted to, it's a tier zero format. So we're playing the tier zero deck, the Snake Eyes. Seeing if we can get all the way up to, to master how fast it is, how easy it is. It's kind of a complicated deck. But if you're interested in that, you know, Tuesday and Thursday should be fun. And um, if, if you don't like to watch it live, or if you want to see the old episodes, we edit all those together and then put them out on the YouTube. You get basically like a... Uh, the whole month condensed into like a two-hour video. Nouvelle? Yeah, we did Nouvelle. Nouvelle with snake eyes goes hard. Yeah. All of your maxi Twitter posts look like that. Look like what? I mean, they all say ban maxi, but some of them I make arguments and some of them I just say day whatever. The replies were gross. Oh yeah, it's 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 a never-ending struggle. I've been I've been saying like you know Max C is bad for for a year. I made a whole video about it between me or my channel and the people who reacted to it. Like two hundred thousand people have seen it, and I still get people coming in and they're like, um, Max C is not bad. All you gotta do is draw Ash, idiot. And I just link them the video, and I'm like, you, you're you repeating point number three, which I is at this time code. I've thoroughly debunked it. If you, if you can find a way to debunk what I said, then post that. But don't just hit me with the same ten arguments. And what's weird is that they'll, you know, oftentimes they'll be like, yeah, well, even if that's true, what about this other thing? And I'm like... That's point number six in the video. You should just watch the whole video before coming back because I've heard everything you've already said. People smarter than you have said it like eight times and they just get very angry. And I, I've run, I'm running out of patience. I've been doing it for so long. <laughs> just play Flew Under Ease, my guy. 
Yeah, what's weird, I'm like, I already debunked this, and they're like, you didn't debunk it. I'm like, it's it's in the video, and they're like, just because you made a video doesn't mean it's right. I'm like, well, if it's not right, then tell me why it's wrong. They never have an argument. Their argument is just, you aren't right. Just because you say a logical thing that makes sense doesn't mean that's correct. It's, it's, I, I... I want to say it's like, you know, a problem with misinformation on the the the, uh, the internet or a problem with like anti-scientific thinking that's just kind of expanded. It feels like everyone has this emotional truth that they care about more than like the, the truth truth. <laughs> but I feel like that's kind of always been a problem. It's just front and center um, on the internet. Might also be a mental health issue, possibly. Who knows? But yeah, and I guess also while I'm here, one last thing to mention. Friday, we will be doing a stream. A brand new stream. I have a brand new um, series that is getting started. And actually, you know, real quick. The best way to introduce it, instead of trying to improv, I've been working on the intro for it. And I'll just read that off real quick, and you can let me know if this is, uh, good. First stream, yet I've watched many of your ladder climbs. Well, welcome. No Baldur's Gate 3? No. Not anytime. Those, like, Freddy really likes the Baldur's Gate stuff, but I've uploaded that to the VOD channel. And, like, the Yu-Gi-Oh! videos get, like, hundreds of views. And the Baldur's Gate videos get, like, 16 views. <laughs> like, it's unfortunately not even popular enough to warrant, like, streaming it, really, unfortunately. Even though I think it's really neat. If you want to keep up with what I'm doing on Baldur's Gate, you got to follow me on Blue Sky. Because I've been giving, like, updates with pictures and stuff. Uh, my monk punched the embodiment of death to death, so that's unusual. But anyway, this new show on the, the, the on Friday. I don't want to be spoiled for the game. I'll probably never play. Did you go tavern brawler? Yes. Has pure sub terror been done here? No. And I probably wouldn't at this point because it's way outdated. My rule in general, if I'm going to ladder climb something, is that um, it has to either it has to have either gotten support or been released in the last two years. If it hasn't gotten anything new in the last two years, it's it's not going to be able to make it into master. Tavern brawler is unbelievable. Yeah, especially with like a high level monk. And it's, again, I I don't want to go on to. Um, whatchamacallit, too much Baldur's Gate, but it's, um, if you don't, if you're unfamiliar with monks in D&D, they're basically like kung fu warriors. Their whole thing is that they punch really, really hard, and they can punch really fast, too. They get the ability to make, essentially, like, four attacks in a turn. They can just, like, do 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 And at this point, it's like, I'm a dex monk, so when I punch, it's like, you know, a dice roll plus my dex modifier. And then I got a feat called Tavern Brawler that adds my strength onto that as well. So it's a dice plus dex plus strength. Plus I've got like magical gloves that do like 1d6 fire damage when I punch. So I set things on fire with my punches. And then I went down like a uh, subclass that makes my punches even better where they deal psionic damage. I punch you so hard, it's unbelievable. <laughs> you take mental damage from it. So it's like every punch is like 1d8 plus strength, plus dex, plus 1d6 fire, plus 1d6 psychic. And they end up doing like 30 per, per, 30 per hit sometimes. And he can punch you like six times. <laughs> And some of his like some of his punches will like stun you, and if you're stunned, you just skip your turn essentially. So like even bosses, I'm finding I'll run up and then like stun them, 
and then knock them on the ground and then just punch them a whole bunch and then it skips their turn and I just punch them again and they're just dead. And it's really weird because at this point, again, I'm fighting like gods and like deities, like angels or like, yeah, the, the reincarnation of death appeared and tried to steal my soul, but I punched him really hard and he died. I don't know how he died because he said he was like, you know, death incarnate, but I punch really, really hard. <laughs> He's ist it itching for a fistin'. Yeah, and the thing is too that um I've I've um recruited a you can recruit like hirelings. Like people who aren't main characters, but you just bring them on for like extra damage. And I recruited another monk. <laughs> I don't have a healer. I have two monks, a barbarian, and a warlock. So really it's just two monks run up trip you, beat the shit out of you while you're on the ground, the barbarian walks up and starts hitting you, and then if that's not enough, the warlock's just in the back, like, zap. You made it half the game, yeah. Yes, but what if I punched him really hard? The combat was super confusing. It's a little tricky at first, but you get used to it. Yeah. Zap, motherfucker! That's that's all that's all warlocks do. They have a, a, a spell they can cast for free called Eldritch Blast. And it's just like purple lightning. That's all they do. <laughs> but yeah, okay, real quick, there's this new show coming out Friday. Here here's the intro for it, at least the dialogue. I still need to make like a video and everything for it, but Destruction is a core mechanic of Yu-Gi-Oh! In every duel, cards are destroyed, either by battle or card effect, sent to the graveyard, only to return unharmed in the next game. But what if they didn't return? What if the cards destroyed in a duel were actually destroyed? Or to put it in Master Duel terms, dusted? Would it be possible to climb the competitive ladder with a deck that is crumbling to dust in your very hands? I don't know, but there's only one way to find out. I'm Hardleg Joe, if and you didn't know, and this is the Deck Devastation Challenge. Beginning from a fresh account, I'll kick off my climb with 20 packs and the two starter decks you get for free. From there, I'll attempt to climb the competitive ladder from Rookie all the way to Master 1. Each time I win a duel, I get one pack and I get to craft one card if I have the dust. But win or lose, every card destroyed will be destroyed for real. Or every card destroyed in a duel will be destroyed for real, forcing me to plan and build more strategically than ever before. Will I be able to overcome the devastation and reach master before the end of the year? Or will I only end up destroying my own sanity? Uh, hard to say, hard to leg, but, uh, you know, we won't know until we try, so let's jump into it. Nuzlocke? Yeah. That's, that's the way I envisioned it. Was like, every time a card destroys, it gets destroyed. Otherwise, it's essentially like Simo's masochist challenge, if you've seen that. Good luck playing Unchained. I will not play Unchained. That's, I've been trying to think of what deck, what deck I should play. Um, because again, I get to craft cards and I get to pick what cards, or I get to pick what pack to open. And really there's two options that people have put out. One is, um, basically make, uh, what's it called? Magispectors? Because all the monsters can't be destroyed by card effects. But those monsters are also very small and can't be, can be destroyed by battle. And destroyed is destroyed. I could try to do like hazy flames because they can't be destroyed at all, but those are really bad. I could just try to do a whole bunch of like, you know, craft marshmallows and burn cards and do like chain burn. Um, or 
I could do something like uh, Sky Striker, where the deck is mostly spells, because even though there are negates that negate and destroy, not every negate destroys, and spell trap negates are rare in general. So if I make a deck that relies on spell traps, I might be able to avoid losing my most popular cards. We could do magical muskets. Yeah. The problem, of course, is that even if Sword Soul is, like, good enough to get to, like, Diamond or High Diamond, those are long duels. It's a chance for a lot of stuff to get destroyed. Labyrinth, potentially. Yeah, Labyrinth. The problem is the more... What I really need is a deck that just, like, win wins quickly. If I had to choose one right now, it would probably be Scareclaw which is not immune to any of the things I said, but is something where, like, um, it, it would be able to win going second, and uh, that's the problem, is, like, I, I'd have to either draw or craft a tryhard, and as soon as that tryhard gets destroyed, the deck falls apart. I need to, unless I can win a duel to craft another tryhard, I'm fucked. <laughs> Nibiru? The, Nibiru doesn't destroy. It has to specifically destroy. If a card is destroyed, can it be crafted in the future? Yes. What happens if, like, ten cards get destroyed? Then I destroy all of I lose ten cards. As I keep going back and forth, half the people are like, well, if you can craft cards and you can pull from any pack, you know, this isn't that difficult. You should be able to climb easily. And the other half are like, you will not be able to keep any cards for any amount of time. Does card destruction destroy? No, it doesn't. Yeah, cards that can't be decrafted are immune, too. That's also, like... So that's why I'm starting with the two starter decks. Everything in there, I'll be able to keep no matter what happens. And anything out of the um, the bonus packs, the uh, whatchamacallit, the legacy packs are immune. Granted, I can't get anything specific out of the legacy packs, and there's no good archetypes in there. So... So you can't surrender? I can surrender. I can surrender before stuff gets destroyed. The thing is, though, like, if I'm going to go into every duel and, like, surrender as soon as I get in, I'm, I'm never going to be able to climb the ladder. Blue Eyes Chaos Max... Chaos Max Turbo might be the way to go. Especially because, um... What was it? Do they have the, the starter decks that you can buy? Or is it just the structures? No, there's no way to see the starter decks. Not without switching my account. But the starter deck comes with two blue eyes. The deck abs. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, so I'll, I'll have two indestructible blue eyes. So if I can get Chaos Max, that might be a way to go, because, like, these will never get destroyed. I'll have Silver Cry. I'll have Ring of Destructions that can't be destroyed. And not much else. Starting with the Synchro, I already picked. 
But I feel like this is worse because there's like nothing good. Yeah, the only reason I went with this is basically Ring of Destruction and Threatening Roar, especially early on, to protect my cards from being destroyed. And back to square one is not awful. Uh, so I get that and I get this. So I get like two Call of the Haunted, two Dust Tornado, Smashing Ground. Like, you know, as far as like starting, this will be a lot easier than the um, most masochists. Just because I'll have like, I, I have decks. I have cards with like 1800 attack and like spells that do stuff. It's a good baseline and I'll never go lower than those. Solo counts? No, I can't do solo. I can't open anything else. And these decks, I only got to choose one starter. And the Link one is too specific to like cyber stuff. It has Jelly Cannon, but nothing else is really all that good. Same thing here is like all these cards, like having some generic synchros are decent, but they're not great. All I get out of it is like MST. This one, I, I feel like having Ring of Destruction and a 1900 beater is going to help a lot in the early game to win cards. Would snow be a good craft? Maybe. Of course, if it gets destroyed, then I'm screwed. But yeah. Either way, that'll be um, that'll be next time. And I, originally, I was just going to start with those, but I feel like the first episode would be boring if it was just me. Like, I, if I made a big deal about like, you know, if a card gets destroyed, it's destroyed, and then I didn't have any cards that could be destroyed. So we're going to open twenty master packs too, and who knows what I'll get out of there? I might get some good stuff that can then be lost. <laughs> Technically, every three destroyed cards gets you a free card. Yes. And that's the only... I can't decraft cards unless they're destroyed in battle. Which... Or destroyed by card effect. Which might lead me to, like, making a deck of, like, URs, SRs, and stuff that is just meant to lose so that I can gather dust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I don't know if that would be interesting. Regardless, let's go raid someone. I am number one right now. Um, we're, we're 95. There's a bunch of VTubers.